I don't know if you can. Okay, you can hear me. Hello, and welcome to this gauntlet con running of Seiko Creek Vigilance Committee, designed by Keith Stetson. Hello. Uh, if this is your first gauntlet video, congratulations. You are in for a treat. The gauntlet is an international community of tabletop role players. Uh, and they run so many different things continuously. And this particular run is part of Gauntlet Con 2018. Uh, and there are so many games happening that I won't even attempt to describe the entire width and breadth of them. But this is one of them. Uh, and we have between four to five players here to try out Seiko Creek Vigilance Committee, which is, and I quote from the book, a game of justice, law, revenge, and the difference between what is right and what is good. We have taken uh, a little bit of shortcuts to speed up the play. So if you are watching this, uh, trying to learn how to play the game yourself, know that we've done a little bit of the history prep ahead of time and a little bit of the uh, character picking. So you may feel a little confused as you are watching at home. But I will still start with reading aloud our starting situation. Three infamous outlaws sit in the Seiko Creek Jail. You and your posse just deposited them there for the crime of knocking over the Weaverville stage. One lockbox missing and one life lost. The evidence against the desperados in the cell behind you isn't as robust as you'd hope. They're probably not all guilty, at least not for this. But the reputation precedes them and the townsfolk have no intention of letting them make it to trial in the territorial capital of Bright City. It wouldn't be the first time that any of the three have gone to trial there, and surely it would be far from the first time their gang leader, Duke Cahill, used his influence to get them off. The people of Seiko Creek know this, just like they know that as powerful as he may be, Duke Cahill won't be able to get them off the end of a rope if it's tied tight and dropped fast. Some of the citizens of your fair town are gathering outside the jail right now, and the train to Bright City doesn't leave until 3.10 p.m. tomorrow. What will you do? I realize I've gotten a smidge ahead of myself because even in the book, it tells me I should discuss safety tools ahead of time. That was really good advice from the author. Uh, because we are online, it's a little different than in person. So uh, I do like to use the X card. I do ask that we actually say it out loud just because we may not be watching the chat or your window might be minimized or your camera might be glitching or whatever. Um, it is a little bit more forward than some other ways of using the X card, and I apologize. If that does make you uncomfortable, feel free to try the other ways, uh, but I do want to be able to recognize your discomfort. And since we're story gamers, I'm guessing we know what the X card is, but I still like to go over it so we're all on the same page. If any content that we come across in this game makes you uncomfortable, we don't want that. You're more important than the game, and there's lots of great options in the game. So please let us know. Say X card, that's it. You don't have the obligation to explain what it is. We'll cut out whatever the most recent bit was, make a different choice and continue onward. I usually try to figure out what it was on my own. It's usually pretty obvious what it was that was objectionable. Uh, if it's not, I may ask a question. If you're not comfortable answering that question, that's fine. I'll move it back far enough so we can just get rid of any possible thing that may have been triggering. Any questions on that? Your little video avatars look good. I like the uh, very demonstrative shaking of the heads. That's easy to see when you're that small down at the bottom. All right, so right now we have with us Lauren as Damian Walter, the sheriff of Seiko Creek. Bethany is Alonzo Marquez, the deputy of Damian Walter. We have Mike as Lee Owens, the proprietor of Owens Feed, and Alex as Thomas Duvall, the rancher. Uh, Sid, if they do show up, will be John Gammon, the former outlaw, who is the brother of one of the three outlaws that is currently in the Seiko Creek Jail. And I think even though we have already selected uh, the characters, it might help us get a little bit into character if we read out the starting blurbs. Do you folks have, still have access to that, or is that going to be hard to find them? Like the player, the character wins? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got mine open. Awesome. Do you mind going first, Lauren? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I will. Or, you I, know, if you want, I can read. Um... That's totally cool. I'm there. I was, I kind of half lied. I was like, I got it open. I'm not on page 61. Okay. I'm on page 61, so I can do it. 
Okay. Uh, P.S. Like I'm Lauren, if she her pronouns, uh, just as an FYI. Um, awesome. So Sheriff Damien Walter. There have been a lot of sheriffs in Seiko Creek, although there hasn't rightly been a single one yet. That is to say, no one with the full force of power of the count county court behind him. Nothing behind the badge but the man, and they won't be till Seiko Creek is incorporated. Of course, that's something that any lawbreaker who gets hauled from Seiko Creek to the county seat in Bright City is more than happy to point out to the judge, the jury, and anyone who doesn't move away quick enough. But to me, it doesn't matter. And I think it's the same for the most of the people here in Seiko Creek. A sheriff without backing stands only on his reputation, and I think mine is strong. I've treated these people fair and never made exceptions, except where there was one warranted. I am to keep that balance between freedom and the order to keep Seiko Creek a place where everyone can get a fair shot. That shot might not always come out of the way the shooter wants, but I plan to make sure everybody at least gets the rights to line up, line it up. Thank you, Sheriff Walter. Very nicely done. You're welcome. Uh, do we have the deputy ready, Bethany? Um, sure, let me find that. Let's see. Um, I've got it here. Okay. Um, yeah. It never fails to amaze me just how often it feels like I've stepped in a big old pile of horse shit. My eyes are on my destination and then my boot is in the shit. It's that feeling of being stuck between two places, the awkwardness in between. You could be all the way here or all the way there and probably either would be okay, but you ain't fully in either place. You think, well, here I am again. I'm always finding myself in places I don't mean to and trying to do my best in that situation. Same thing happens to Sheriff Walter, except I don't think he knows it to be so. I envy that. Sometimes it's better not to know. But then if you don't know the train is coming, you don't know to get off the track. Guess why that's why the sheriff has me. Guess that's why the whole town's got me. Thank you, Deputy Marquez. Uh, Lee Owens, our proprietor of Owens Feed. Yeah, uh, I guess if you've been anywhere at all, you'd be likely to say that Seiko Creek is in any kind of special place, and you'd probably be right. But the thing about that is, we can make Seiko Creek a special place. We can make it our own special place. Our, beginning have, our beginnings have been an auspicious, as auspicious or not as any other place that become great. Uh, we just need the men and the women and the will to make it so. We already got ourselves a foothold out here, and now we need to start climbing. But you can be sure that not everyone wants to see us climb up to greatness. We need to be ever vigilant against those who would drag us back and tear us down to what we tear down what we already built. I won't lie; it's going to mean sacrifices and struggle, suffering today for success tomorrow. That's how everything great got that way. It won't be easy for any of us, but nothing worth doing ever has been. Thank you, Lee Owens, the proprietor of Owens Feed. And I believe we do have a Thomas Duval, just not a John Gammon. Am I right on that? Yes. Alex, I think you are muted. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Sweet ass. Some folks think I got something against Sicko Creek. I cannot say that is, I cannot say is they're right, but nor can I say is they're wrong. It's just most folks, Sicko Creek is the center of this place, the hub from which the spoke fast book six stand. Me, that's wholly backwards. I've been out here since before there was a place called Sicko Creek. Since before anyone even put up a building in the place that would later be called Sicko Creek. When I came out here, there was no cavalry to deal with the Indians or the Mexicans. There was no general store to buy a feed and supplies. A man did for himself, and me and my own did quite well for ourselves. Got damn near a hundred head of cattle and been turning profit on them for more than half a decade. Did it all on our own, without the help of a town. I'm not saying I got anything against Sicko Creek. I'm just saying I'm not, uh, I ain't no spoke. Very nice. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and I will not read out John Gammon right now because we'll see if he's going to factor in at all. We might just leave that out if Sid's not here to uh, play that character. In addition to our player characters, the members of the posse who have just apprehended these three known criminals, we also have some NPCs in town. There are the three criminals that have been arrested, Maybell Westcott, Trevor Krieg, and Billy Gammon, who is John Gammon's brother. The outlaw boss, Duke Cahill, who is at his ranch outside of town, but he's always a presence in Seiko Creek. Mayor Clayton Dix, who is, of course, a politician. 
saloon owner Lindsay Hale. She's a merchant. Town drunk Morgan Baird, one of the townsfolk. Jasper Phelps, owner of the local livery, who is a merchant. Carolina Ruiz is a teacher. Townsfolk. And Elwood Grant, the agent of territorial governor Smalls, who is also a politician. There's one other person that we need to know about. Mention was made about someone losing their life in the robbery of the Weaverville stage. We need to figure out exactly who that was. Uh, this is a person that's significant to all four of your characters in some way. Uh, you don't need to worry about it being extremely profound or deep or even unique. Repetition is fine. Uh, you can err on the side of being obvious rather than being clever. We just want to be able to tie this person into the town. And given that you've already done your history, we may have some ideas of who this could be. I've seen some other uh, people and possibly former stores, perhaps I should say, uh, hinted at in the, in the history. So any ideas on who may have been uh, shot during the stagecoach robbery? I got a couple pitches. <laughs> Go for it. What you guys think? Um, I was thinking about. Have you guys seen uh, Once Upon a Once Upon a Time in the West? Um, it's sort of like built around this. Um, this woman is marrying this like local guy, and so like she comes into town on a stagecoach, and he ends up getting killed by bandits uh, at his ranch. Um, but I was kind of wondering if it might be interesting if it was kind of re a reverse thing that this person is coming in. Maybe we all know this person um, to like, I, they're coming in from the East. They're wealthy. They are, yeah, marrying into a local family kind of thing. So maybe we've met them in the past and now they're finally moving in. Um, and then that is the person. Um, the other possibility pitch that I was thinking was uh, um, was that it's an investigator coming in to uh, look into the burning of the <laughs> Allison Sons shop, um, which is like, but that's like a very particular uh, plot to my uh, characterization, I guess. So I don't know if either of those sound cool or a spin on them or something like that. They busted a basing, and I was like, oh, that first one is really cool, let's do that. And then he said to the second one, and I was like, oh, God, that's really cool, too. <laughs> 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 um, I, I have no preference. I like I like the idea of an outsider coming in. I think that's going to create some neat, like, conflict for sort of East versus West or out, insider-outsider mentality. Yeah, I think there's a lot of fun twists that you can put on that, especially uh, I'm picturing this guy was out here before in his like incredibly clean outfit and jangling his spurs as he walks around town. And he's like, oh, yeah, and I'm going to move out here. I'm a true son of the soil out west. Toads. Did not work out so well for him. <laughs> All right. We need to give this fella a name. Anyone uh, particularly gifted with coming up with names on the fly? <laughs> <laughs> Let's call him. Don't just say one of the names I'm already looking at. That's a bad one. Okay. I looked at a book and it, the name Carter is on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it seems like an outsider name. Uh, Carter Laughlin. Yeah. Carter Laughlin. And on our character keeper, there is an NPC tab. So Carter is now at the very bottom. Uh, and he's, he does not have a faction. His parentheses say deceased. Uh, so let's see. All right, now we need to figure out how everyone has interacted with Carter before. I feel like Lee may have a strong connection with someone coming from the east yeah i feel like i may have like made a really hard pitch to him maybe he was just visiting or something like that um and because like i'm really looking at building up the town and want to get like new uh funds in and that kind of thing and maybe some notable people to draw more people in and that kind of thing um yeah i probably pitched him hard and was probably writing letters to him um after he left 
maybe the first time if you came back a second time or something like that then like i'm yeah that's good Maybe hard sale on him to move out here and i'm wondering if it's okay i'm looking at the existing npcs mm -hmm. uh i'm trying to think who he might have been engaged to I feel like Carolina Ruiz might be a good person. That sounds great to me. Which I have a quick question. Yes. <laughs> I notice. Um, so if we tie Carter into our history, I'm guessing we don't get a faction with deceased. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so is it very detrimental if I? tie myself to Carter using a um, history question with like two favor. He is not part of the history. Oh, this okay, is like cool. a separate thing, yeah. Phew, okay, cool. Yeah, <sighs> only the people uh, that we made before. Perfect. Thank you. But you can connect yourself to Carter in any way you want on that connection. Did you have something in mind? Oh, that's really dangerous. Um, I mean, they go for it, right? Like that's because I feel like my gut, I mean, my, my gut for this character says that I was having an affair with him. <laughs> um, well, no wonder Carolina Ruiz doesn't trust you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the first thing I thought is, let me go back and see how she feels about you. Yeah. Is it not good? Is it oh, not good? Her, her trust is very, uh, yeah. She, her gut, her, her intuition is correct. <laughs> I'm not to be trusted. Yeah, I mean, totally. You can go for that. That definitely fits your uh, your conception of the character. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, actually, I like that a lot. I'm already picturing Carter being like, no, 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 we can't. Nobody can find out about this, right? Yeah. Oh. And I love it because, um, oh, I'm sorry, what's the, oh, like Lee, right? Is giving a hard pitch for like, no, nah, move here, man. And then you've got like, uh, Damien saying, I don't know if that's a good idea. Like, it's, it's way easier if you just like come into town and like leave again. <laughs> you should just be visiting every once in a while. Yeah, like, you, like yeah. Oh, I love it. All right. For Deputy Mills or Thomas Duvall, do we have any connections leaping out for Carter? Um. Hmm. I feel like maybe the first time he was here, I like kind of showed him around and introduced him to people. Um, I, I don't think I have any stronger connection than that. Like friendly acquaintance is about it. Friendly acquaintance works. I'm noticing some of the uh, character names are wrong in certain places here. So if you notice that, uh, that is not intentional. I'm using a character sheet someone else made that is honestly really freaking awesome. But a couple of the characters have the names wrong. Uh, and for me, I was thinking it could be like a, a neighbor's thing. Like he was gonna move into the ranch next to mine oh. and I'd like, I was giving him like the, the low down on like, like the, I don't know what farmers talk about in the old west, but like, how to be a good one around yeah. here. Uh, and actually, Alex, that brings up a great point that your characters know this stuff. So you don't have to say, you know, like, I start criticizing his horse choice because that's a city folk horse. And that you, you need a Morgan if you're out here. What's that? Do? Uh, just say, I make fun of his horse. That's fine. Or we talk about farming. Uh, nice. How did you feel about having someone move in as your neighbor, especially someone who clearly just came and bought the land? Like, I mean, I was willing to give him a chance, like a chance, but I suppose I don't need to worry anymore. So if you were giving him advice, was it actually good advice? Oh, no. It was like <laughs> mostly good advice with some bad stuff thrown in to see if he'd catch it out. And uh, he obviously didn't. He never did. No. Nah. Like, yeah, you, every, every fourth seed should actually be a rock if you're planting. It's... <laughs> okay, I'll totally do that. So you could have been rivals, but hey, someone took care of that for you. Isn't that convenient? Yeah. 
now that land is available and nobody's going to be taking it up works out pretty well for you not suspicious as <laughs> i'm looking at the let's see who who seems innocent of this all right maybe a few of you do but all right, so a quick rundown of the mechanics. Each of you will be playing a character and saying what they do. As the judge, I will tell you what happens in reaction to what your character does, depending on the fiction and your character's favor with different groups. If your action is upon another player's character, you must negotiate with them. The acted upon player will state a price to make your action true. You may accept, refuse, or continue to negotiate. Negotiations must make sense in the fiction. Both mechanical and fictional elements can affect negotiations and may be offered as part of them as well. Uh, I'll go over what all of those terms mean. As you have noticed, if you've looked at the NPCs, there are four different factions here in Seiko Creek, and each faction has their own desire. Uh, if you play towards that desire, you will gain favor with that faction. If you go against that desire, and also for other reasons, you may lose favor from that faction. We have the townsfolk who desire simply to be safe from harm from wherever it may come. The politicians who wish to remain in power, often by whatever means necessary. The merchants who want to grow and prosper. And the outlaws, both in and outside of the jail cell, who wish to be free, uh, obviously in the immediate sense for the ones that are in the jail cell, but in a larger sense for those in the community. Favor is the indicator of how well respected, heeded, adored, tolerated, uh, your character is by that particular faction and we have in our character sheet the factions listed up at the top and as you change the drop down menu for your favor it will show you the disposition which is a really neat little trick for a spreadsheet uh, you start with one favor in each faction so as we are going through the history questions and modifying it just remember that unless uh, you have the removal of favor from one of your history questions, you should have one because one is neutral. Uh, favor is a tool that in the higher your favor is with a particular faction, the better you are using that tool. It doesn't mean that it won't break if you try to use it for the wrong job though. So uh, don't think you are invulnerable just because you have a high number with that faction. If you are acting on another character, I mentioned negotiation. If you're trying to do something that will directly affect another character and they get to decide if that is directly affecting, uh, you have to negotiate with them, which is simply saying, I want this to allow you to do that. You could say, uh, have favor involved in that. Like, well, the townsfolk are seeing you do this, so you have to lose a favor with them. Or you have to give me one of their favor because I come out looking better uh, in this transaction. You could have consequences, which are basically... Uh, the things that happen to you, like you could have a broken arm, you could be cowed, you could be embarrassed, you could be bleeding out, you could be half dead. Uh, those are the consequence types of consequences that we might have. And uh, basically any of the mechanics or fiction can be up for grabs in negotiations. And you want to try to come to a resolution for negotiation or else I get to come to a resolution for it. Uh, and that's usually worse for you, but it's fun for me. So um, let's see, uh, harm is tracked by consequences. That's important to note. So the most common case is that one gunshot, knife wound, steer kick or whatever will give you a wounded consequence and the next one will be bleeding out. Medicine is not nearly an exact science at this time and place. So you wanna be careful. Uh, a bullet is nothing to be thought lightly of. Although Thomas Duvall, you don't have to worry quite so much. We'll get into that later. Down below, all the favor stuff are your keys. These keys are the actions that define a character. Whenever you take an action listed under a key, you will gain an experience point. Uh, we call that turning the key. And once you gain four experience points, you gain a new privilege. Or gain a favor in any faction of your choice. If instead of playing into your key, you want to go against it, you can buy off the key. Uh, that's doing the opposite of it. And there's a little write-up for that. So both the deputy and the sheriff have the key of duty, which is carrying out their sworn duty as a law officer. But if they wish to, they can flout the letter of the law or turn in their badge. Uh, it's usually a good idea to save that for a dramatic moment. And when you buy off, you immediately get an advance. So you can either get the new privilege or the faction as soon as you buy off your key. 
The burdens on your character sheet are fictional weights that you are shouldering as we enter play. They don't directly interact with any mechanics, but they are something that you want to have in the back of your mind. Our deputy starts play with two burdens because Deputy Marquez is holding the keys to the jail cell. That's something we want to track, and I think it maybe is a very not quite the bottom, but right above your history. Uh, it asks, do you have the keys? And right now for the deputy, it says, yes. The keys are, for all practical purposes, the only way to get into this jail cell. If you try to strap dynamite to the wall, uh, you'll probably open the wall and all the prisoners inside the cell as well. It's a relatively realistic world we're in here, even if we have some cinematic cliches. So getting those three prisoners out any other way than the keys won't leave them in the greatest shape. Finally, everyone has one or more privileges. You'll probably be getting more of those as you go throughout the game. Privileges are how you bend all of the other rules. So, for example, if a player wants to take an action upon another player, you'd normally have to negotiate unless you're one of the characters that have a privilege that says you can commit violence on another character without negotiation. And it would probably be very helpful for us to find out who can do such things. So let's take a minute and say what our privileges are as we enter into play today. Sheriff Walter, what can you get away with? Well, I was going to say, I think my ears are burning. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I definitely have a, the privilege of being a trained shootist. So when I attempt to inflict violence, I succeed without negotiation. So I'm guessing that's just like, I shoot you. Like, and that happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Whereas if, say, Lee, Lee Owens pulls out a gun and says, uh, I'm going to shoot you in the face, Sheriff Walter, you can say, okay, you can, but here's what I want from that. Like, Wait. you lose all your favor in every faction forever. Like, you can make whatever demands you want of him that. Right. But if you say, Lee Owens, I shoot you in the face, you just shoot Lee Owens. In the I, face. I feel the burden of this tremendously because I'm like a, a very nonviolent player. <laughs> so I, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I, I feel like I'm going to save it for like a good dramatic moment if I, if I exercise it for sure. Uh, and people have definitely gone through without using that at all. Excellent. I'm excited to, I'm very excited about all of this game. I'm going to mute myself before I gush further. <laughs> You can also use it as a uh, the reputation of being the train shooter. Just be like, uh-huh, you want, you want to do this? We're, re we're ready to go through with it. Deputy Marquez, what are your two privileges? Uh, yeah, so um, because you're wise when you reason with the sheriff and he does not listen, you may move one favor from an affected faction from or yeah, from an affected faction from his sheet to yours. I anticipate that happening quite a bit from the sounds of the, the sheriff's personality so far. <laughs> um, uh, and, sheriff, um, you should really enforce the law instead of trying to sleep with everyone. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, and because of your heavy past, when you attempt to incite violence on anyone except the sheriff, you succeed without the ne negotiation. <laughs> So Lauren, you can feel safe about that one, but everybody else yeah. has double targets painted on their back. <laughs> I love this. I, we're going to have so many good scenes, Bethany. <laughs> uh, Lee Owens, what is your privilege? Uh, my privilege is that when I attempt to convince a player to do something for the good of the town and they do not listen, choose one, they lose a favor with a faction watching, or I gain a favor with a faction watching. Yeah, that can uh, really make you powerful when people don't listen to your words of wisdom. <laughs> uh, and Thomas Duval, you have an excellent privilege in the company of all these violent people. Yeah, because I'm tough as old leather, I can ignore one wounded consequence. You have to shoot so, me twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would have to gang up on you to make that happen. How would that? No. That's they impossible, would. right? No, I'm sure they wouldn't. They'll be at each other's throats. You'll be fine, Thomas. Don't worry about it. All right. Before we get into history stuff, does anyone have any questions? We have the list of all of the keys there. Uh, we won't read them out loud, but if you have a chance, you may want to take a look at other people's keys because I am not going to enforce the keys. I may notice that you're turning a key, but that is kind of like a self-service thing. If you say, I think this was the key of pride. Cool. We trust you. Take an experience point. But uh, you may forget you have one and someone else might notice it. Like 
Uh, Lee, actually, you were kind of thinking about the future of the town, so that might be key of farsighted. Oh, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll take an XP for that. It is a one shot, so uh, feel free to grab those XP and dive into your keys as hard as you would like. Make sure all right, we got that. Do, 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 do. All right, let's take a look at some history stuff. We got a lot of it done already, actually. Okay, let me run uh, backwards then, since I've been going to our sheriff first so many times. Oh, actually, Alex, you didn't get a chance to look at this at a time, right? No. Okay, so I don't want to go to you first, so you can hear what other folks are saying, uh, and then modify or add on as you wish. So let's see. Uh, Mike, do you feel okay going first on that one? Yes. Yeah. All right. Someone in town owes you a significant debt of gratitude, and more importantly, currency. Who is it, and why do they need that money? Uh, I think it was Carolina Ruiz. Um, when, uh, I mean, this kind of like foreshadows a, a future question on the history, yeah. um, but her home burned down when um, a like feed store or whatever. Um, next door burned down um so i i fronted her the cash and yeah and you had nothing to do with that oh um <laughs> no <laughs> okay fair enough uh, not that anyone knows <laughs> yeah as long as everyone keeps their mouth shut no i didn't have anything <laughs> and i did not realize when we made her the fiance of Carter Laughlin, that her house also burned down. Carolina, I'm very sorry that this is happening to you. And I was sleeping with her. <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel wow. so bad. Worst luck in town. The, yeah. the, the tragedy of Carolina Ruiz is going to be the subtitle of this one. Uh, Lee, one of the town's leading lights has thrown their weight behind your civic vision. Who was it? Um, so I was saying it was Elwood Grant. Um, I assume he like lives in town, even though he works for the governor. Is that? Yeah. Fairly accurate. Um, so yeah. And what I kind of like picture is that he, uh, he kind of like understands my vision for like a bigger and brighter like region and town and that kind of thing. Um, and he also knows that once the town is incorporated that um, he can kind of move into the, the mayorship or, or gain some political power through an election and that kind of thing. Um, so I think like he is, yeah, all in on uh, uh, expanding uh, the town's influence and such. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you're the vanguard for him running through and once you get things rolling, he's, oh yes, hello, yes, now we need an officially elected mayor. Oh, Wood Grant, pleasure to meet you. Supported by Governor exactly. Smalls. Yeah, like, and that was my thought is that as more people move in and that kind of thing, those are people who would know him from his like territory wide office, mm -hmm. um, where they may not know the mayor Clayton Dix as well, and that kind of thing. Yeah, I guess the people coming in would not know him. Yeah. Uh, the person in town who depends upon your store for success, and what would happen if your store were no longer there for them? Um, so, uh, I thought Lindsay Hale, uh, who owns the saloon, um, just that like the, these sort of like big time ranchers and cowboys and that kind of thing are coming through for supplies through town and that kind of thing. Um, maybe there's, yeah, maybe the, the supply shops on the other side of, uh, the river, whatever the case is, are further away, like, yeah, whatever the case is. So right now they, they come here. Um, and, uh, so Lindsay enjoys the extra cash of, um, all of these sort of like ranchers coming through town and that kind of thing. Um, and I think Lindsay probably, uh, if I were to go out of business would just kind of move back East has gotten used to like a life of luxury. Um, as opposed to just being like a small town saloon owner, um, is kind of a bigger, bigger in the hospitality industry and that kind of thing. And probably, uh, um, can't go back to the the old tastes of uh, a simpler life. 
Yeah, it makes sense that uh, your supplies could be very important for the. You maybe this isn't the end of the the cattle drive, but like in the middle somewhere. So like they have to stop and get supplies, and now, uh, and if they're on their way back from having dropped off the cattle, they have extra money in their pocket. No, uh, spend some of it on supplies and most of it on cheap whiskey. Yeah. Uh, and here's the question that was foreshadowed earlier. One of the outlaws currently in the jail managed to aid your business. It says whether intentionally or inadvertently, but I think I know which one it is. Uh, <laughs> who was that? And what did he do? Uh, I think it was Trevor Krieg. I think it's a it's a mix of intentionally and inadvertently oh. uh, for the table. Um, so I think perhaps uh, I had arranged for them to uh, sort of like put a kink in Ellison Son's operation. Uh, and he, in the process, ended up burning the whole place down and then burning uh, Carolina Ruiz's home as well. I like the idea that Trevor does not understand what kink means. And he's picturing, <laughs> like, Lee was talking in these very fancy vocabulary words, and Trevor's like, ruin it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> Just burn down half of the town. Isn't that what you wanted? It was close, Trevor. It was close. Good <laughs> job done. Uh, and one of the creditors who begrudges your debt. Who is it and why? Yeah, so I, th uh, I think it's the Mary Clayton Dix. Um, I think this gets back into like the political thing. So he's uh, he's been worried about the possibility of the town incorporating and him losing his sort of like small town rule. Um, and so he had given me this big loan um, in hopes as the sort of like prominent shop owner in town and that kind of thing uh, in the hopes that I would then support his efforts. Um, but instead that just kind of got me like more excited about like the possibility of more cash coming in and like the power of politics and that kind of thing to like create this economic opportunity. And so now I think like, Clayton is kind of like, uh, like I should not have lent him the money in the first place. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure on this guy um, through that loan to, uh, yeah, try and knock him down a couple notches. So that might be his leverage to stymie the vision that you're, you yeah. and Elwood are working on together. And I think he know he probably knows as well with Elwood, like, walking around town like he owns the place now and that kind of thing that like yeah um there's a there's a real threat there all right and i think you did all your faction or your favor stuff already because it looks like it yes. adds up to eight so that seems like you did it correctly because uh, it should add up to eight i read the first third of the book <laughs> <laughs> nice work uh okay wow and you are quite popular with the townsfolk actually I mean, you know, it's not off the charts, but for Lee Owens, that's that's pretty good to start off the game. <laughs> All right, let's pop over to our sheriff, Damian Walter. I see that someone relies on you to maintain their position. Who is that? Yeah, so I think um, I think this person is Jesper Phelps, I think it is. Yep. Um, oh, and I just before I start, I just might add up to six for some reason. So I'm just wondering if I... We'll double check it. Oh, did you start with one and everything? Oh, I didn't know. Okay, yeah. Ah, uh, that explains it. I'll, I'll deal with it later. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, yes. So I think uh, I think Jesper Phelps um, relies on me for just like a bit of extra like security for his like... It's, it's a library, right? Like, it's how you pronounce... Yes. Yeah. Um, and I think like... If I stop providing that security, I think he'd just be quite vulnerable. Um, since it sounds like we get a lot of like people, people passing through, <laughs> burning stuff down all the yeah, time, burning stuff Green down. Needs this. Yeah, yeah. So I think like um, perhaps it's like in I don't know in response to the fire, maybe like um, I've been helping provide like a bit of extra security, like in response. And I'm happy to provide this service because you know I'm here for the people and I'm here to like look out for the underdog and stuff. You know, right? So if there's a lot of uh, a lot of bandits. And arsonists causing problems, then that's that's on me, really, and my deputy, of course. <laughs> then wait a minute, that's my fault, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> is, two questions: Is this out of the goodness of your heart, or is it a tit for tat kind of thing where he's giving you something as well? Uh, 
to ask me these questions. <laughs> I'm really not to respond to all them with like, because we make out sometimes. Um, no, I, I think, uh, I think, I think like, this is a thing Damien does like out of the goodness for, of his heart, but like really it gives me a sense of pride that like he's actually okay. doing a thing, like helping out for this community. Um, so but it's, a, it's sort of a bit like self congratulatory in a way, I think. Like, yeah. He gets a lot, he gets a lot out of it. Work I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if you ignore the fact that the other place burnt down, no, this is a success story. <laughs> <laughs> if you're if you're going by percentages, very few of these businesses have burned out. Yeah, single exactly. digits, almost. Yeah, we're making we're making steps, making progress in this. You know, yeah, you know, gotta move forward. <laughs> and you are doing this through legal means, um, just standard police work, not anything shady. Ooh, good question. I. I think it is through legal means. I like the idea of this guy who, like, on the face of it, just appears very like by the book, by the badge kind of thing, but has this like real sorted <laughs> mm -hmm. like um, personal life going on that is a bit like coloured and checkered. So I think he, yeah, I think he does try his best to sort of do things, do things legally. And I'm sure a part of that is like my deputy's inspiration as well. Um, yeah, your deputy is pretty wise. Yeah, I'm very. Um, the, the division <laughs> between your personal life and uh, professional life. Yeah. Speaking of your personal life, <laughs> someone has romantic intentions towards you. Who and how do you feel about them? Yeah, well, I was really tossing it between Mary Dix and just because of his name. <laughs> 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 and Duke Cahill. Um, I think in the end, I'm going to go for Duke Cahill. I think, like, because I kind of dig that kind of um, sheriff versus, like, the the deputy other uh, leader of the outlaw gang kind of thing right like i imagine he and i have probably had a, a couple of run-ins so they've gotten a bit close and there's been like witty repartee exchanged between the two of us um smoldering looks yeah it's a lot of lots of smoldering looks near misses um are they gonna shoot each other or kiss each other i'm not sure <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i this is inspiring me do you know the game starcrossed yes uh, <laughs> actually <laughs> I, it sounds like a great setup <laughs> Um, this character is funnily enough, like uh, inspired by a Star Wars game I played recently. <laughs> had a gone, so that makes well, there you go. Yeah. I guess it shows. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think like I don't think he and I have actually acted on it, but I think yeah, there's a lot of that Star Cross like tension kind of thing. But I don't know he wants a piece of this. Like, who wouldn't want a piece of this kind of thing? Uh, is that in mostly in Sheriff Walter's head, or is that also oh. how the world works? Um. I'd say it's probably, uh, I feel like it's 60 to 70% in his head and 30, <laughs> 30 to 40%. Like ballpark in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's pretty confident that, yeah, like if he, if he made a move on him, like it'd be reciprocated. He's getting signs. <laughs> okay. If you're cool with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you let someone off with just a warning, even though they had, you had them dead to rights. Who was it and what did they do? Yeah, this is definitely Lindsay Hale because that woman is a one B A B like badass. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think like she. It, it's probably a thing of like people were drinking in her saloon. There was like a really bad bit that went sour. Someone cheated, and like she pulled out her historically appropriate gun. <laughs> <laughs> And um, and like saw to it herself because like she just she's mean as hell, um, takes her business seriously and doesn't doesn't like take any like silly business from people. And you know what? I gotta respect that that woman because like you know she's doing her own justice just the way I do justice, and she was doing a community service. It saved you a little bit of work. Yeah, I love that detail about Lindsay Hale. Hey. Uh, one of the outlaws currently in your jail gave you a surprising sign that he respects your authority. Who? What did he or she do? It should should be there in that one. Um, yes, Billy Gammon. Mm. Yeah, I was thinking. Uh, I kind of actually like if instead this is Trevor Creed, just because I feel like okay. he's a he's a good like he's a good NPC to yeah, tie in a bit more. Um, and I think I think it was like you know what it was. Um, he gave me props for helping out uh, our friend Jesper Phelps and taking action to like tighten up the security around here, right? Like to stop those arsonists. 
Uh. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I think it was it was yeah the the verbal I'm I'm all about the verbal praise and this affirmation and like external gratification. So if anyone tells me I'm doing a good job, <laughs> I'm I'm very easily sold. Clearly, he meant it. Clearly, yeah, clearly he had nothing to do with it at all. Like such a good such a good bloke. <laughs> And someone in town resents your power and would see you laid low. Who is it and why? Oh, I feel so bad about this. It is definitely, <laughs> <laughs> definitely Carolina Ruiz. Um, I don't know that she's wrong. <laughs> yeah, she's very, very right. I am the worst human being. She thinks I'm very immature and reckless. Um, and uh, I'll change this actually because it's uh, now that we've established that um, I was having an affair with her fiance. Uh, I think, yeah, I, it's probably more the fact that I, she suspects that I was sleeping with her fiance. Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if she knows, like, yeah. that she <laughs> she's like, other people maybe just see that professional part of you and don't worry about the personal, and she sees where those kind of bleed into each other, maybe? Uh, I think for that, like, I I think, um, I, don't, I don't think, like, um... Damien has like confirmation that she knows, but she, like mm -hmm. she know, like from the table, she knows. Like she, she somehow found out. Um, I think it's a bit of uncleared air between she and I. Okay, I, I like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm picturing the looks. A lot of people are giving you looks for different reasons. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just eyeing up the sheriff. <laughs> Everybody stares when you walk into the room. Yeah, yeah, that is true. It's, it's because I'm I'm pretty hot. I don't. I, <laughs> It's all because everyone's super into me. Okay. I hope that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're reading the room right, Sheriff. It is okay. <laughs> I'm going to lose so much favor to the deputy because they're just going to be like, deputy, everyone's really bad at you. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> picture, you we're playing in person. Bethany just reaches over and takes all your chips like it's a gambling <laughs> table. World Series of Poker. <laughs> totally. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be so out of favor so quickly. It's going to be amazing. Like, well, just keep flirting with people and it'll come back. I know it will. Yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of Deputy Marquez, yeah, doo -doo 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 -doo. someone thinks Seiko Creek, maybe a lot of someone's, thinks Seiko Creek would be better served with you as sheriff. Who is it and why? Oh, that's that's Carolina Reese, who is, um, you know, it's not even that she really thinks I'm, you know, would be a spectacular sheriff. She just thinks I would be better than the current sheriff. <laughs> so, low bar. <laughs> yeah. Especially as far as she's concerned, it's a very low bar. Um, I don't know how she actually feels about me, but at least I would be an improvement. I imagine, um, I'm not sure what the timeline is with the Ellison sons and the fire, but I'm guessing that although the protocol is she probably should have gone to the sheriff, I'm guessing she went to you. Um, yeah, that, that checks out. Yeah, like uh, if I want something done, I should probably go over here. Oh, and uh, just bouncing back to Lauren, don't forget to check your favor to make sure you add up to eight. Awesome. Thank you. Oh, that's right. uh, I gotta change. And deputy, someone looks out for you like their little, oh, I love this answer, like their little brother. Who is it and how do you feel about them? Yeah, that's Maybo Westcott, who is currently in our jail. Um, she's my ex. And, uh, you know, we were engaged at one point. Uh, we were still, you know, uh relatively friendly when we run into each other and um yeah i don't i don't know how much i know that she looks out for me but she definitely okay. does so it might be uh on the sly kind of thing like yeah if if her gang is planning something like no, we're not gonna we don't need to go over there we don't need to get yeah. marquez involved in this okay. interesting i want to see that dynamic when there's bars between you, you say it's mostly friendly but that might affect the dynamic. I'm not sure. I've never been on the other side of bars from any of my exes yet. <laughs> oh, neither I'm young still. Um, you helped someone out of a jam, even though it was beyond your duty as an officer of the law. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Who was it and how did you help? Uh, so, yeah, I think I put Lindsay Hale there, although I'm not sure how. Um, uh, We've gotten a little uh, preview of how Lindsay might act. So it's certainly believable if she has shot someone uh, over a bad bet that she may have crossed the law. Yeah, I think um, 
I, I think that, you know, there was probably a fight that she was involved in that, uh, you know, I kind of covered for us like, okay, it was, it was clearly self-defense. I saw it. It's, you know, <laughs> uh, when it was maybe not, it was pretty questionable, I think. Uh, is it okay to add that neither you or the sheriff know that you've helped her out in this way? That like, she's gone to the sheriff and ah, it won't happen again, sheriff, I swear. And then it happens again. And the deputy is the one covering for it. And like, it's, it's not going to happen again, that's, deputy. No, that's great. Yes. Yes. So we've each helped her out and not said anything to different occasions. Mm -hmm. I love it. So perfect. perfect. We'll see if that comes up or not <laughs> in play. If Lindsay starts sticking her nose where it shouldn't belong, which sounds like she's the kind of woman that may do so. One of the outlaws currently in your jail knew the man you shot and forgave you for it. Who? Why did he forgive you? Uh, and if folks didn't see it in the burden section, our deputy had a little run in uh, with someone who maybe not was not as guilty as they seemed before the trigger was pulled. Yeah, the thing that I thought this person was guilty of, um, he wasn't guilty. Uh, Billy Gammon was. I I don't think he's told me that, but he like he doesn't seem to hold a grudge um, <laughs> that I killed his friend, and I don't know why. It was like, yeah, he deserved to die. Um, maybe should we come up with that crime or leave it um, to sure, be defined yeah. later if needed? Uh, yeah, actually, probably it can be defined later. I think. Okay. Yeah, actually, that might be good, because then if we see a crime and go, oh, it was that one. That works. Yeah. Uh, and someone in town did not and will not forgive you for it. Who was it and how did they know the man? Yeah, this is uh, Morgan Baird, the town drunk. And uh, the man I shot was his son. Uh, is that tied at all to the fact why he is the town drunk? It, could, it definitely didn't improve things at all. Like, maybe he was... A little bit. He wasn't, he wasn't the town drunk before. He was just a drunk. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to go ahead and name his son Freddy. Okay. So now we know who that was. All right. And to check out your favor, should go yeah, to... So it starts out at one, not zero? Yeah, every, everything starts out at one. Okay. Uh, then you so go... I feel like that's still going to leave you one shy. I have a, a negative one. Yes. Morgan Baird. But they should end up adding to eight. The, oh, okay. You have three with the outlaws. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And I think, Lauren, you have nine now? I just realized that was died. Hang on. Um, <laughs> dying. Oh, I'll, I'll do this again. <laughs> it would be this much math. <laughs> All right. Not. I'll set that up. Thank you. And Thomas. Oh, you got a bunch of stuff in here now. Uh, someone in town has prospered thanks to your ranch's success. Who is it and how has the ranch helped them? Well, Lindsay Hales prospered. Don't be a saloon without people. And there's only people here because I was here back when this was a ghost town. And uh, I may or may not go there myself to inhale alcohol, but you know, one person can't keep a saloon running by themselves. That'd just be ridiculous. You do your best? I try. <laughs> um, next up is someone in this town has lived on this land almost as long as you have. Who and how do you feel about them? I kept going back and forth, so I haven't got much on this one, but I figured, why not make it the town drunk? Okay. I spend enough time at the saloon. So... Uh, how do I feel about them? Oh, maybe they were like, they also had a ranch, or they were also doing something similar to me, but they've like, they're down on their luck. Morgan bad. Does that make you feel... Uh, sympathetic towards Morgan, or Morgan just couldn't cut it? Oh, he's been here so long. It's got to be sympathetic. Okay. Gonna have a soft spot for the drunk. 
There but for the grace of God go you. <laughs> you beautiful soul. The, the grace of something else, perhaps. Who knows what Thomas believes in. Uh, and what of the town folk knows about your cattle deal, but hasn't said anything yet. Uh, Thomas is in... Uh, how do we say this? Thomas had a, an opportunity to get a good deal buying some stock uh, that may have been acquired extra legally. Yeah. You could also say bought a uh, rustled cattle, but you know. If you want to direct it. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Who yeah, is it uh, that knows room. about the deal? Ah. Oh. Who's about this? But I mean, she's so down on her luck recently. She's just been using this to get some, you know, some help every now and then because she needs so much support in these dark times. And I get the support of silence. Oh, so she says, uh, well, I'd hate to have to make this information public. I do need some more money for my hotel room, though. Yeah. Okay. It's a good partnership. <laughs> now, I like that you look at it as a partnership. <laughs> partners of this you shut your mouth i'll give you money uh one of the outlaws who brokered that cattle deal showed himself as a true son of the west who was it and what did he do well you know trevor Krieg started that fire and he needed a place to lie low you know when the sheriff was out looking for him and so he came to me and you know i gave him a bed because you can't just have outlaws and all your secrets getting caught by the sheriff and I figured, like, my house would be just empty. He'd have taken everything and run. But when I woke up, he was helping out with chores. You know, I knew his stuff. He was surprisingly honorable for an outlaw. You know a lot about him. <laughs> All right. And uh, finally, your ranch wasn't always as large as it is now. One of your neighbors feels that this expansion has infringed upon their land rights. Who is it? Are they right to think so? I think I'd just make this a local politician, because why not? So it's Mayor Clayton Dix. I think mean, over the years, you know, as I've been getting more and more cattle, my ranch has been just going so well. I've just been moving the fence just slightly, like a couple dozen meters. It's barely anything, but he just gets so antsy about it. What has he ever done for me? I mean, he's only been in this town half a decade, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, Hardly any time at all. Blood. A blip. I, I, I like to picture that it is uh, Trevor who was helping move the fence one night. That's one of the chores <laughs> he was helping out with. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, this is a good chore. Thomas, we're going to get along fine. All right. Let's check our favor. And it should be adding up to eight if we've gotten it. Uh, so let's see, Alex, you would go up to in merchant. So that should be three also up to with townsfolk. Uh, so that should be three. I think your outlaw is two and the politician is zero. That does add up to eight. All right. And in addition to your uses of favor throughout the game, at the end of the game, we will have a brief epilogue. And whoever, whichever players have the highest favor in the faction get to decide the fate of that faction and how its members thrive or fail in Seiko Creek after the game wraps up. You might want to play with that in mind, or you might want to blow all your favor trying to make out with people. I don't know what you want to do. It's up to um you. On that note, like I realized <laughs> why I was adding up everything wrong, and it was because I hadn't taken out and one from townsfolk, and I think that it's so appropriate that uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, everyone loves me. It's, yeah, um, so it's it's fixed now. The townsfolk hate me, and I think that it's very um, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> that they should do that. Yes, uh, excellent observation, Mike. <laughs> we have quite a lot of popular people with the outlaws. <laughs> Uh, all right, we are all set to start off. Shall we take a quick five minute bio break before we get into the meat of the game? All right, it is uh, 510 where I'm at. So wherever it is uh, you are at, add five minutes to that. Yeah, that made sense. All right, see you in five.
sorry for being late. I, I had to, I had to um, quickly go and give you Keith a, a dream in the in the Discord for nailing my playstyle in one sentence, which was, or you could <laughs> make out with everyone. <laughs> and <all> your favor. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Yay. I figured you needed some sort of caffeine to get moving. <laughs> yes, I also made a cup of tea. Um, I'll see if it turns out to be a good idea or a bad idea. Hmm. Oh, hello, Mike. All right, so I think we have everybody back. It is a little confusing having Michael's head at the bottom when we don't have Michael, but... Um, he set this up because my account required 24 hours more notice to, to do it. So he helped us out that way. All right, then let's get rolling with this one. So our four person posse has apprehended these um, supposed stagecoach robbers, Maybell Westcott, Trevor Krieg, and Billy Gammon. And our first scene starts as the lock, uh, the key is turned in the lock at the sheriff's office. We have the, the lovely sound effects team for our movie with the slamming of the door and the turning of the lock. And uh, before even uh, Deputy Marquez can turn around, uh, he knows that someone is behind him, uh, immediately interested in what's happening. And it is sort of the person who's almost the de facto mayor here, Lindsay Hale. And she's looking on all four of you. <sighs> well, gentlemen. Nicely done, nicely done. Starts patting you on the backs and uh, giving you a handshake. And she has a very strong handshake. I imagine that Thomas in particular appreciates uh, the firmness with which she shakes his hand. Uh, I'm very happy to see that you've gotten these folks off the street, although I'm going to be missing a few paying customers, it looks like tonight. Well... No matter the rest of the, the townsfolk who want to be out to celebrate. They give you much trouble, Sheriff. I know me nothing I can't handle, Lindsay. But I appreciate you. I appreciate you asking. It's nice that you care. And yeah, I will see you later for the celebrations. Because yeah, we uh, you got to take the wins when you can. You know, it's such a shame about um, about the Ellis's establishment, you know, burning down and all. So when, you know, when things, when things go right for a change, you got you to gotta celebrate. Oh, I can, sometimes fires happen. It's wooden buildings. I, if the Crystal Palace were to burn down, I mean, that would be a tragedy that the town would only have one saloon, but we would get over it. Mm. Pregnant pause. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, you all should come by uh, later on for a drink on yeah. the house for you four, of course, of course. You'll be the right deputy. Absolutely. <laughs> that's that's the spirit i think like um like uh damien will like give you a good like slug slug on the shoulder kind of thing and like <laughs> yeah uh and while uh you're you're yucking it up with Lindsay, someone else is kind of leaning into the doorway very far with uh the balance precarious it looks like this person is kind of on one leg kind of ready head down to the ground uh and you can smell the alcohol on his breath from here he's also come from across the street from uh, hail saloon and he is staring directly at deputy marquez uh so you managed to arrest these three without shooting them huh guess you're improving and he spits on the ground of the sheriff's office Well, they they didn't shoot at us first. They came out peaceful. You saying that my boy was shooting at you? He wasn't even guilty. You know it, Marquez. You know it. And he starts lurching towards you. Yeah, the second he took a shot at me, he was guilty of attempted murder. Uh, what do you do? He's coming at you. Um, You can handle him easily, obviously. He's... In his cup. Yeah. And I mean, he's drunk and he's also kind of right. So yeah, I'm not going to like 
look gone on him or anything. Um, uh, you want to join them? Because we can make that happen. What do you do physically as he's because he's going to fall on you and with his um, I, I'm just going to like I'm going to sidestep and um, I think kind of like if, if we're close enough to the, the wall or the bars or something, I'm going to like hold him up there against it. You could lock me up too after you shot my boy. Sheriff, are you helping out with this at all? Or are you just going to let a deputy deal with his own stuff? No, I, of course, I've got to look out for my deputy. Like, I think, like, um, like, uh, <laughs> we, like, Jamie will definitely take his very, like, protective, calloused hands, right? Like, he's got sort of very warm, like, secure hands, you know. He, he gives good hugs, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, he'll be like, like, whoa, 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 like, buddy. You gotta, you gotta like take it easy. I can see you had a couple too many drinks. I was sort of like try and get him to sit down, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it would not be hard to get him to sit down. He doesn't yeah. have a lot of control over his muscles at this point. Uh, from the cell, you hear Billy Gammon say, "Sheriff, sheriff, sheriff, take it easy on him. He's got a hard road to hoe." I am taking it easy on him. What do you want me to do? I mean, uh, I guess, say, deputy, can you get can you get us some water or something? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'd like to like, take the opportunity to uh, to to leave and go like I don't know, go out to the the pump outside and kind of take my time and coming back. And <laughs> okay, um, does anybody else go outside? Like Lee and Thomas, are you hanging out inside the sheriff's office, or are you? I'm going to stay with uh, good old Morgan here okay. until the sheriff treats him right. That's true. I guess you would have some sort of skin in that game. And maybe I kind of like follow outside, but not like all the way. Like I'm just kind of like keeping an eye on what's going on in sort of like both situations. You need to be aware of everything that's going on, I think. Uh, so you would also see this then, Lee, and Deputy, you would definitely see it, that some of the townsfolk are starting to gather to see if the rumors are true that you've brought in the three outlaws responsible for the murder and the stagecoach robbery. And um, did you recognize in the crowd? Carolina Ruiz is one of the people there. And I think probably the other folks we haven't identified yet. And... Um, Carolina tries to catch your eyes, Alonzo, as you're out there getting water. Do you acknowledge her, or are you just on a mission? Oh, you're muted still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, like this isn't this isn't a good sign that there's all these people gathering, but you know it's it's a small town and. People are usually pretty excited about a multi-person arrest. Um, but yeah, I'll go talk to her. You caught them then? Yeah. Yeah. Um, three people. They're in the jail now. Sorry, just out of character for a second. I want to make sure that we didn't establish if she knows who burned down her house. I feel like we did. Did we? Okay. I think we did, yeah. Do Do you think any of them are the ones that burned down my house? Uh, I don't know. Don't know about that. Uh, but you think they're the ones that killed Carter? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure of that I burned down the house. I mean. We didn't, we never, we never have any witnesses, had any witnesses for that or anything. So. Look, you say that we can't do anything, but I know that you mean Walter can't do anything. Well. Or won't. I mean. I've seen him 
I mean, if, if any of these people are the ones who burned down your house, then they're in jail. So hope, let's hope that they were. Deputy, if they're the ones that burned down my house and killed my fiance, I do not want them in a jail. I want them in a grave. Yeah, we have to still have to determine that. Uh, sorry. Um, but that's... We don't just go executing people without a trial. She reaches to take your hands. Do you let her? Sure. She holds one of your hands uh, between her two. And you can see her left hand is on top, so you can see her engagement ring um, on her worn and calloused hands. They've taken so much from me, and I know that you'll do what you can to make it right. She leans when in I and gives you a kiss on the cheek. Ends up bumping your hat a little bit. Yeah. It's... But Carolina, I will I will do everything I can, but don't let the sheriff stop you. Uh, it's and she's whispering I'm... in your ear. Right, yeah. I'm yeah, I'll do everything I can. She lets your hand go and kind of fades back into the gathering crowd that seems a little bit larger than it was yeah. when you first came out. Uh, and some of the rowdier members of the crowd are like, that away, Marquez, that away. Uh, and are kind of the total energy level opposite of what Carolina was bringing to you. Right. Uh, allowing you the opportunity to sneak out of this situation if you would like to. <laughs> I would like to, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be guilted anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Lee, you see this happening. Are you observing, or are you interacting? Um, I think I'm just kind of observing. I'm seeing also, yeah, the crowd growing bigger, and so maybe I kind of uh, poke my head in. Sheriff Thomas, I think we got a situation brewing out here. And I guess you see, like, we, we get that cut, like, to, like, the sheriff in the, in his, what's that building called? The the jail. <laughs> yeah, just the jail, the sheriff's office, yeah. Yeah. And um, he's, like, he's, like, got his, like, hands either side of, like, this poor drunk fellow, like, trying to, like, trying to, like help him out. Because he, like, he, he likes an underdog. Um, like, he's in, like, a rough place. And he, you see him sort of, like, look up and go, like, oh, shit. And to, like, <laughs> prop this drunken man, like, up a bit so he's not, like, gonna fall over and then um and then he calls out to like lee uh, like what like what is it like as he's sloping out of the out of like the jail cell to the scene of people gathering at the outside looks like we got the whole lot out here tonight oh, jesus this is obviously about uh, about them folks in the jail. Uh, I think uh, the deputy was talking to one of them. Oh, uh, who might have a little insight for us? Oh, which uh, which kind member of our society uh, is it? Would that be? Uh, I lean over and I'm just like, Carolina. Oh fuck! <laughs> that lady's gonna die for me. Well, I guess now, I. Why would, she... <laughs> why would she have it out for you, Sheriff? Uh, she just, you know, like some people don't appreciate the way I do things around here, and yeah, I, I respect her. She's a, she's a, that's been through a lot of hard times. Can't, can't knock her for that. Nothing else. I'd be more than a few people with the way the crowds gather out here. Oh. Well, I don't know what to say to them. Like we've got orders to. Keep them locked up until three ten far, and you know what? Hey, it's not my fault because I I haven't even got the keys. <laughs> <laughs> the person who turned the key in the lock is the one who's responsible. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, it's always right here. <laughs> um, I'm sure the crowd will love that explanation. Oh, 
oh shoot well like i gotta i gotta go get myself scared for a bit uh you know wait, wait, wait till they calm down you know um i gotta go find the deputy we'll sort it out teamwork so you're ducking back into the office I think so. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna go hide. <laughs> uh, you, you hear sort of a wow. jeer from the crowd as you duck your head back in. The townsfolk really don't like you that much. Like, there he goes. Won't even show his face. <laughs> I feel like I walk down and I'm trying to like give like a little speech. Uh, um, <laughs> now, now, everyone, uh, we have we have caught the culprits. Uh, and and we are going to bring justice to them. Uh, uh, some good, fine, civilized justice. Uh, I know we're mad. I know we're all very, very angry. Uh, but uh, we have to aim higher than uh, than the mob. I think Thomas will walk down at the end of that with like a large overbearing his shoulder on Lee's, the yes, we are going to bring justice. <laughs> I like the mixed message right there. <laughs> Pretty much the, the two sides of the coin of potential justice right there. Okay. Um, I think both of you should get favor with the townsfolk for that one. Because you are promising to keep them safe from these people. Uh, although we'll see exactly what that means there the townsfolk are kind of nodding uh as you some actually let's say that some are nodding more as lee speaks and some are nodding more when thomas speaks but it seems like you've kind of reached the whole swath of them with this, uh, <laughs> civilized and maybe implied not so civilized justice speech um so they're all kind of calm they're still there they haven't dispersed uh but it doesn't seem like they're really agitating. But let's see. Um, which ah yeah yeah that's who. So Thomas, you are more out front now. Both you and Lee, I think. So uh, you see Carolina, and she comes up. She kind of makes eye contact with you and gives you the look of uh, you owe me. And kind of gestures with her head off to the side of the building uh, and heads off, hoping that you will meet her there. Do you, in fact, go over? I do, in fact, go over. Uh, do you try to hide this from anyone else? Or you're just like, I'm Thomas Duvall and who cares? Yeah. I mean, I'm Thomas Duvall. Who cares? Okay. Tip my hat. I talk to who I want to talk to. Um, <laughs> So she tries to do like that casual thing where you're walking and talking and oh, we're not, we're not discussing big affairs or anything. Um, she gives you kind of a sideways look out of the corner of her eye as you're walking. You think that these are the ones that killed Carter? I think that's more than likely, yeah. Deputy Marquez thinks so, too. Do you think Sheriff's going to take care of him? She puts a little extra sauce on take care of. <laughs> nice. Hmm. Well, I wonder about that now, don't I? You gave a really good speech back there. I liked your part of it particularly. <laughs> well, we've got to look out for our own now, don't we? That is true. Scratch my back, I scratch your back. Say, what do you suppose would happen if when we walked back, instead of stopping where all those townsfolk are gathered, we just walked right up the stairs? and into the sheriff's office together. You think that'd be all right? I mean, concerned citizens. I'm gonna to talk to the sheriff. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with that. I do have a lot of concerns. A lot of them. 
she kind of uh, starts to turn back then, not immediately turning around, but like a wider turn, not turning on her heel 180 degrees, but like, oh, we're casually strolling back this way. Um, and unless you want to lead her somewhere else, she will definitely start heading back towards the office. Oh, yeah, and totally. Got to go confront the sheriff. It's going to be awesome. Uh, is Lee still out front or have you gone somewhere else? Yeah, like I was thinking I'm still out front. Okay, and the sheriff is inside, hiding his face <laughs> from the crowd. Uh, where did we leave Deputy Marquez? I know you were getting the water to help out Morgan, but I didn't know if you made it back in. Uh, yeah, yeah, I go back in and like just sort of hand the tin cup of water to Morgan. Um, so everyone else has left this. Um, and then I look around, I'm like, oh, where did the sheriff go? Well, I think the sheriff's still in there, right? Oh, okay, okay, that's right. Yes. Yeah, the other folks had left, but the the sheriff is. What What are you doing in the office, sheriff? Are you like just pretending to be busy, or do you actually have a reason to be yeah. in there? I think he probably is pretending to be busy. Like, I'm guessing they have like um a desk, like the classic mm -hmm. sort of desk in this place, like with the chair. I think he's sort of like at least got a boot up kind of thing, like as he's like um. Looking through, looking through, like obviously the report <laughs> that he's had to. Yeah, some kind of paperwork. Some kind of paperwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very serious, important, very pressing priority. So you're trying to look like you are doing work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like this is this is very busy, and I can't do other things or deal with that group of people <laughs> because I have to file this paperwork on time. <laughs> I'm the worst. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leaving the deputy to okay. deal with the surly drunk. Yeah, I'm a champion that way. <laughs> so for me in particular, that's great. Yes. Um, no, I walk over and like put my hand down flat on the paper and pick it up. I'm like, and, and it probably it's it's probably just like what is it? Yeah, it's it's probably actually a, a piece of paperwork from a, a bit ago. Like it's a bit old now. Like you can yeah, like it's nothing. It's obviously not like a priority. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's but it really is, really is like legit paperwork and not a, like a love letter from one of your oh. many. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is legit paperwork, but it's legit paperwork you did because I never do paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, this is this is this is a report from three months ago, and you suddenly have a pressing need to read it. Yeah. Uh... Well, you know, I can't, I can't bullshit you, deputy. Uh, I, uh, Should you know, I try. <laughs> yeah, you know, like uh, I, I get that people are angry right now. I, I, I feel those feelings. Um, but you know what? This paperwork has been backlogged for months, and I got to check this. Um, I, I think. I think what we got might be a lot more serious than one or two concerned citizens coming to yell at us. Why? Well, uh, There's a usually, big group out there. Usually, uh, if you let people this express how they're feeling, they they quiet down. Why is it a bit? What's what's the situation? It's it's not so much the the number or what they're saying, it's the mix of people. There, there's people here who would never, never agree on anything normally. You like and they seem to all agree on this, which is that they want those folks in there dead. Here, here! Morgan Baird has <laughs> whipped his head up. Easy that one. Especially that one. It's not at all clear who he's pointing at. Probably <laughs> <laughs> pointing to me. <laughs> no. At least he's not doing that. He's pointing at the cell. <laughs> and uh, like Damien strokes, he's always got that sort of hot, like five o'clock shadow going, right? Like he's sort of like stroking his chin. You get the sound of like sort of skin on stove. It's like, Ugh. well, that's troubling. What do you advise we do in the situation, Deputy? You've, you've got a good read on people. Uh, 
I mean, we're going to take him out of town tomorrow. So all we got to do is stall them, right? So, yeah, exactly. You know, my thinking. <laughs> if they if they think that you know we're we're taking them there, they're gonna be found guilty. They're gonna be executed. Then, you know, I think we need to convince them that that's that's going to happen, and that's good enough. I hope that'll stave them off. You know, yeah. That's a good idea you put in my brain. I, uh, yeah, maybe we should uh, see if Lindsay can, you know, like move this the celebration up a bit. You know, like maybe that'll help calm things down a bit. Maybe. Or, or? well, you know, you get people drunk, and one or two things happens. They get. Uh, They get lazier or they get braver. We went lazier. Yeah, they mentioned it. I yeah, they mentioned it. <clears throat> okay, how's this? Um, we stole them. Which is a good idea that I've had just now. <laughs> wait, wait, what do we, what do we say to them? So, like, so we just go up to them and we say, like, look, they're going to see get justice done um, through the proper course of channel by the book, by the law. And is that going to fly? I hope so. That's that's all the idea I have at the moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, what we don't want to do is tell them that, you know. We could take them to town and they might get they might get released they might they might be found Acqu not guilty we don't need to tell them that. the words acquitted you hear that from the the cell it is maybell <laughs> right yeah yeah thanks thanks uh yeah so that's a word we don't want to say I, I i'm in favor of it do i need to leave you two alone for a minute <laughs> First, let's not say that word around here for your own good. And second, no, you don't need to leave us alone. Are you sure? I'm sure. Okay. Well, I trust you, deputy. So I let, let's let's give this a try. Let's you know put our foot down. Say, look, doing our job. They're also justice done. I won't mention the A word. Everything will be fine. Yep. Uh, just as you're saying everything will be fine, you hear the, <laughs> <laughs> you hear the first steps on the stairs as uh, Thomas and Carolina are coming back. Uh, I think we have Lee. I want to just double check. You were on the porch still? I think I was kind of like down. I kind of moved down from the porch to kind of like talk to the crowd or whatever. Um, okay. So you could probably actually see this coming if you wanted to do anything about it ahead of time. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I'm eyeing that. Yeah. I That's don't know feel. what I would want yeah. to do. <laughs> 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 towards Carolina, her house did burn down maybe because of you. Ish. That's true. And I don't know. I mean, I'm I, I'm a little conflicted, right? Because uh, if they pick the right one out of the, the three that are in the cell, um, it certainly takes care of uh, a little loose thread that I have. Um, conversely, though, um, I want to make it look as if I am upholding um, a higher sense of justice. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel like Lee's kind of torn as he stands here. I, I can kind of picture that body language. Like, should I maybe 
like maybe ahead. kind of like shifting on his feet and kind of like peering at the crowd to see if there's anyone that he could um, perhaps manipulate to help out in the situation, something like that. Um, there's almost always someone that you can manipulate, I would think. <laughs> You're an esteemed uh, member of the town sort. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking for Elwood. Yeah, Elwood and Dix have not shown up at all to this, which uh, you would certainly know is a little strange. Uh, so I guess they're, they'll just walk up in then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you do hear that footstep, and uh, the door opens, and there is Duval uh, and Carolina. And she gives a very cursory glance to Sheriff Walter. Um, almost an apologetic glance to Deputy Marquez. Sort of a, yeah, sorry, but I had to. And um, steps in ahead of Thomas. Unless, Thomas, you want to prevent her from getting any closer to the cell. Okay. Um, she just walks up to the bars with this incredible gravitas. She's not a large or imposing woman. Um, she's just dressed in very simple clothes. But the seriousness with which she walks up to the bars actually kind of stills the horseplay of the criminals in the cell. They're not behaving like perhaps you would wish criminals to behave, like they've been joking around uh, with the deputy and with each other. And that just kind of falls off as she walks up to the bars. And she kind of looks at all of them. Then all, all, of, all three of the outlaws are, are very sheepish, kind of drift back from the bars. She says, who was it? Who was it that pulled the trigger? I just need one name. There's people out there. They all want the same thing. But we can make it just one of you. Talk amongst yourselves. She turns crisply on her heel and she starts to walk out if nobody stops her. <laughs> Hands up, everybody. Uh, and at this point, she gives the sheriff a more meaningful glance. Uh, kind of like, a, yep, that's what I started. Good luck cleaning that up. And I think like the sheriff, um, he gives her a look back, but it's like, he feels really he feels guilty about what he did so he can't really falter for it so he's sort of like part of what <laughs> i think like it's oh gosh she did so much to her um or maybe it's not guilt but more like fear that she knows like about his personal history right because mm -hmm. like she's given him looks like she she's given him looks like she knows but he's not yeah he doesn't quite know if she knows knows so i think he like meets her gaze and then like looks away a bit sheepishly um, as she like leaves the leaves the building. And maybe I tips his hat to her a bit. <laughs> <laughs> like the end of a man? Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel as in control of the situation as I would like to. Exactly. But I did tip my hat. <laughs> uh she walks out and it is completely silent like pin drop silent in the sheriff's office uh, and you hear a little shuffling of the feet of the outlaws uh, and and maybell says alonzo is that true what she says about people outside there's people outside yeah and they are maybe not too patient waiting for y'all's trial. So if I were you, I'd be real careful what I said around here. She, she nods back at you, uh, not nearly as brazenly as she had been before. I know you'll look out for me. I know you always cared for me. I'm going to try. Actually, sorry, before she says that, is it known that you guys were fiancés previously? 
Yeah. Okay. She's yeah, not just so. dropping a bombshell. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> All right. So that is that is common knowledge. Yeah. Um, and then the the two boys in the cell kind of start muttering to each other. It's not really clear what they're saying. They're uh, clearly trying to not be overheard, but they are discussing something heatedly while Maybell is talking to Deputy Martez. Uh, and I think we've got the three of you currently in the office, and Lee is still outside. Are you trying to do anything with this crowd of townsfolk out there? Uh, what are they doing? Are they they're they're kind of mulling around? Yeah, there's definitely mulling. Uh, they're kind of breaking up into groups, and uh, there's probably about three or four different groups, and they're talking uh, some more animatedly than others. And actually, oh no, hold on, we'll save that for a second. Um, some of them are gesturing at the jail cells. Like some of them, it seems like they're not really talking about what's going on, but it's just a, an excuse for a social occasion, like out front of the general store or something like that, but it's out front mm -hmm. of the sheriff's office. Um, and we still have Morgan Baird inside, I believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. That's probably a good thing. So it doesn't seem like anyone is taking any kind of action right now, but there is some discussion going on. Um, so maybe I kind of like walk up to one of these groups that is like very like focused on the, the sheriff's office. Um, kind of just said, well, well now folks, what, what are we talking about here? Oh, oh, Mr. Owens, Mr. Owens. We, we could use your advice on this. Always, always have uh, <laughs> advice to dispense, uh, as you well know. Well, you know all about the machinery of society, uh, and and you have clear vision of the future and what our town could be. We all know it. We've seen your store. You've got the most modern methods. You know it's how true. things should run. It's true. I've seen that automatic harvester you've got in stock. <laughs> oh, beautiful, isn't it? I wish I could afford it. Mm. I wish I could. But you know how things work. Political things, me mechanical things. What what do we do if we're looking at a machine and we see a piece that's broken? Now what you're talking about a broken piece here. Well, I, I mean, if, if things are supposed to be going a certain way, and they ain't, and, and you start poking around in there, maybe in that, uh, the, the harvester that you're looking at, and you see, see, it's just one bad piece. And if you just got rid of that piece, everything would be running smoothly. What would they now say you about know me? You know me. I, I don't like speaking in metaphors all that much. I'm a little slow. Uh, I need it to be a little <laughs> bit more direct than that. Uh, now, nobody's ever accused you of being slow, Mr. Owens. Oh, I know you, you talk about my behind my back all the time. We're just fun if we say anything about you. You're one of the leading lights of this town. One of the leading lights. Well, I do appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I need you to uh, lead my light a little bit here and uh, tell me what you mean by, uh, by all this uh, similes and metaphors you're throwing <laughs> down. This figurative language. <laughs> it seems to me that we got this machine it's going to send those three reprobates. His friends pat him on the back is a really good word. Uh, over out to Bright City, turn them around, and send them right back to us. That seems like a broken machine to me. And we're trying to figure out what's the piece that ain't doing what it's supposed to do. That's a good question. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think this is a, this is a case. You got, you got a murder on your hands. You got, you got whatever arsons have been going on. Uh, you think they're connected with that? Oh, why not? Why not? <laughs> oh, those Cahill boys. It's gotta be Cahill, right? I guess that makes sense. Um, there's, there's missing trunk, I believe too. Uh, so you got theft, you got, they're, they're not going to send these boys right back. You think they're going to be, 
the whole machine would have to be broken. There'd just have to be one part working in that entire machine. And, and that's not, not, that's not the way of the world. I, I guess you'd know better than we would. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to speak out of turn and he kind of looks around, see who's around him. Uh, I certainly don't want to, to, to irritate Ms. Ruiz. But Mr. Laughlin ain't the first person that Cahill's gang killed. Sure ain't the first person. <laughs> Everybody in the group kind of shakes their heads. What makes you think that this one is going to get him at the end of a rope? Uh, all I can say is that uh, uh, Lady Justice is blind. And... Um... <laughs> sometimes that works in our favor and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> but uh it's just better that way. <laughs> <laughs> kind of nodding, his eyes are a little glazed over on that one. <laughs> hmm. But I uh, tell you. Uh you know what? You know what? I uh, what are you what are you thinking right now? How do you think we should solve it? Well, I I don't presuppose to tell you how the town should work. I mean, that would be up up to Mayor Dix, I, I would suppose, and the sheriff. And... Where, where are those folks anyway? Anybody see the mayor? It's a good question. I was looking around for them earlier. No one's heard a thing. I don't know where he's at at all. Strange. I think he'd want to come and congratulate Sheriff Walter uh, and one of the other people in the group kind of kind of laughs. laughs. No, no, I don't think you would want to do that. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it seems to me, I, I, I would say the best way to handle this situation, and uh, that is when Lindsay Hale is coming out of her saloon, ringing her bell, uh, uh -oh. deafeningly loud. It says, brothers and sisters, it is time to celebrate the great accomplishments of our posse, our law enforcement officers, come on into Hale Saloon. We got half price drinks tonight. We got all the ladies pouring shots at the bar lined up. She doesn't get to finish that much. I mean, come on. Uh, the more animated people talking take off. Uh, the the gentleman that, that Lee is talking to, it's kind of like, uh, hold that thought uh, a minute, Mr. Owens, if, unless you want to come uh, and he's kind of excusing himself in the middle of the conversation um yeah i think i'm i'm intending to head over to to lindsay hales but i think i'm just gonna kind of run into the sheriff's office and give them a little update of what's going on <laughs> Fair enough. lee owens is the scout Uh, anything happening in the sheriff's office uh, while this is going on? I think, um, so from memory, uh, there was a Maybell engaging our deputy, uh, mm -hmm. Marquez, right? And then we had like two in, two other individuals talking quite heatedly um, amongst themselves. Yeah, Bill, Billy and Trevor were back there. Um, um, I think like for sure, like, uh, Damien's going to try and assert some authority over the situation uh, by sort of like getting up out of his chair from once he was slouching. Like we get that shot of like his like thumbs tucked into like his like belt uh, loops, right? Like as he's like swanning over towards where the two of them are talking. And it's like, yeah, you know, if you've got something to say, you should like speak up a bit so the rest of the class can hear. They pause and kind of look over at you like, no, it ain't, it ain't nothing, Sheriff. Don't uh, don't worry yourself. That doesn't sound like nothing. Hat tip. Ah. <laughs> uh, mm -mm. Well, uh, I guess this is probably Trevor who's going to talk to you then, because he's uh, talked to you before about Jasper. Oh, all, all the good work that I do. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know that you're you're bashing a law and order over there. Uh, That's right, Sheriff Walter. 
Uh, we're just a little bit worked up from all this talk of uh, heads rolling. I don't blame you. It's a... Uh... Things are a bit animated, yeah. But you don't need to worry. I'm, uh, and I'm the, I, I, I got this. Like, I'm the arm of the law. I'll make sure that justice is done. Lady Justice is blind, after all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Prefer if she weren't blind, if she could keep an eye on what's going on, like you do with Mr. Phelps' store, uh, to, to protect it uh, from unforeseen accidents. Mm. Uh, yeah. Just don't want there to be any accidents here. Uh, one, on account of I like my head where it is. And two, on account of so does Duke Cahill and everybody else out there at his ranch. Hey, say no more. I hear you. I've got the finest deputy. You can, you know, like, keep keep, uh, keep an eye on you folks, you know, like, into the night. Yeah, we're in the cell. I'm not worried about us. I prefer if you keep an eye on anyone outside. Oh. Last thing we need is them getting riled up. I apologize. Yeah, of course. I have the finest deputy who uh, can like keep keep watch on these fine folks here uh, outside to make sure that you know there's no no trouble. We don't want any trouble here. Uh, and that's probably about the time that the bell starts ringing, and yeah. you would hear a more muffled cry because you're inside. Yeah, yeah four strings. <laughs> and uh, Lee Owens coming up, running up the stairwell. I pop in and uh, clarify what you just heard the garble of. <laughs> <laughs> what that actually said was. Uh, and the three in the cell kind of exchange a look. Keeping it nice and calm, Sheriff? Yeah. Michelle looks at uh, the deputy. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, yeah, I think like uh, our good sheriff looks at the deputy as well. <laughs> 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 All eyes on Alonzo. Yeah. Um with any luck they'll be they'll be distracted by the party. Uh, sleep in late tomorrow morning, we can get you out of town without any trouble. But uh there's always it's always the other possibility that uh, I think I think we should. Um, should we think we should take this opportunity to make a plan while everybody is over there at the saloon? I think, like, look at the sheriff. Like, come on, do your job. <laughs> yeah, no, I. That's it. I was thinking the exact same thing, deputy. Uh, hey, uh, Lee, you got a good read in this town, right? as Lee searches for the mute button. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure enough. Yeah, uh, I mean, you've been out there longer than we have. Like, what's the, what's the feel like? How are, how are uh, people doing? They're talking about some broken machines. Broken machines? How they might fix them. Interesting. Uh, I tried to get them to clarify, and they would not. I find it strange that these folks be uh, so hooked uh, on agricultural problems. I... I'm not sure if they're talking about agricultural problems. Uh... Oh, like uh, Sheriff. Metaphor. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sheriff, I understand. You're new, new around here. You don't know what it's like. But I figure after seeing that display earlier, anyone would know what the townsfolk are thinking. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> I mean, look, you're right. I could see what I could see if people were angry. But I was just inquiring, you know, like uh sounds like there's a bit of a split. Things are schisming. Is uh, people think one thing, people think the other thing, and you know, fine folks like yourself, Thomas and Lee, who 
have particular ears to different parts of the community and I'm 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 open to to like listening to you guys to figure out what we should do. Get this plan going. <laughs> Crowdsource an idea. Yeah. And of course it'll be my idea once it's all said and done. <laughs> While you were thinking of a plan, let me just remind you that if you're hitting your keys, you should be taking experience. Uh, uh, I think Thomas was very close to hitting one of those as you were uh, looking at the, the sheriff being a newcomer. It seems like a bit of your tradition there. That is what reminded me of it. What? And deputy, this is a great chance to tell the sheriff to do something smart that the sheriff's not going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to talk to Lindsay. She's got them all over there. She's, to be honest, they'll look. Don't don't take this the wrong way, but they're going to listen to her over you. They're definitely going to listen to her over me. Ah, so we, we get her to keep people from getting too riled up, and uh, you know maybe maybe we can keep this peaceful. Uh, Lindsay is good at solving problems. I think I'm kind of looks like. <laughs> I'm wondering what the sheriff and the deputy are thinking after the line. Lindsay's good at solving problems. <laughs> <laughs> you both know how she solves. Yeah. Them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I appreciate I I appreciate your thoughts, deputy, but. Uh, But you know, Lindsay, if she uh, she sees something that needs doing, she just does it. We'd hate to see a lot of bloodshed happen over uh, over some like hurt feelings and misunderstandings about how justice ought to be done around here. Something yeah. needs doing. That's why we need and to you don't to do it. it. Thomas, I feel like the sheriff sort of like tries to stand a bit taller again, like rolls a shoulder and it pops right. Like he's trying to assert like the masculine authority. <laughs> and he's like, uh, we're doing, we're doing things. Tomorrow, 310, get these fine folks on a train. That's doing things. That's doing things the right way. Sending them on a trip to town. Nice vacation. Take in the sights. Well, that's a nice way of putting it, but no, we're on the train to justice. <laughs> well, you know what they say. Justice is blind. <laughs> Sorry, that was really good. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's, how, that's how it ought to be, Thomas, you know? Like, I just, I'm just doing my job here, following the law, and it's not on me to be their executioner. It's not on this town to be their executioner. Not in this instance. It is on you to be the sheriff. And I haven't seen you do much of that recently. Well, what do you want me to do then? How about anything but hiding in your office? Ugh. Wide words coming from you sit out on your ranch. You know, you you have no idea what's going on in this town. Hey, I am this town. You're just looking out for yourself. I was here before anyone else. I'm sure you think that gives you uh, like some some grand divine like insight into how things ought to be running now. 
gives me some insight into the way things are. The way things have been and will be. I think like the sheriff like slopes a look over um, at Lee. Uh, now, now Thomas, <laughs> we've had conversations about uh, uh, what the future means for you. Uh, sheriff though, uh, the present, what's gonna be really good for the town right now, uh, I only half believe this uh, for some reason, but uh, would be you going over and stopping Lindsay from serving them all that booze. I don't think uh, the the history of uh, uh, the world's great civilizations does not necessarily uh, uh, have a lot of great stories where mobs get uh, infused with booze and uh, it turns out well for uh, Blind Lady Justice. Oh, gosh, dang it, Lee. I said that I didn't want any bloodshed. You, you want me to go up and tell these folks they can't drink? They'll kill me. This town's this town's going to burn down. I know that we've, we've seen a few burn-ins in the, in the past few months, but it's going to yeah. burn down based on uh, how they're talking out there. And uh, yeah, they might be coming straight here, too. <sighs> what do you think, Deputy? But up. Well, yeah, what? Yeah, actually, it's you. You got. You got. You got a good in with Lindsay. Why, why don't you go down to the uh, the saloon and have a have a discussion about uh, maybe watering down the booze around here? So there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll go talk to Lindsay, but you should. I don't know. Think of come up with a, some something in case they. Here, take the keys. <laughs> I think it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I want to do is walk into a, like a whole crowd of drunks with these big keys to the cellar. <laughs> yeah. So who's going to take them? The sheriff? Yeah, I'm handed in to the sheriff. I think as you do, we get that like the movie shot of the like, the sheriff's eyes widening, right? Like he's not, he just does not want this responsibility um, to match like his title. But he sort of like, Get that shot of like him taking them, like having them in his hands and like sort of pocketing them on his like his belt loop. Um, I think at the first time he looks a little bit flustered and like you've actually put like responsibility in his hands. And then he like gatches himself and he's like, ah, oh, yeah, thanks, deputy. They're safe right here and pats them on his on his hip. So the deputy is going to go across to the saloon. Is anyone else joining him? I'll go with the deputy. Yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sheriff is all alone. <laughs> Here's the keys. Good luck. Enjoy hiding out. I love all you guys. <laughs> uh, so as they walk out, Sheriff, what are you doing? I almost wanted to do a call back to the chat, which was hide under my desk. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> No, I think I guess Morgan's Morgan's left, right? It's just, yeah, um, he when when uh, Lee came in and said half rice drinks at the saloon, he's like, "Yep." I think yeah, yeah. I think I think people leave, and I think Sheriff probably uh, probably goes back to his desk and like leans it back just enough so he can put one sort of like dusty cow like dusty boot like up on the on the surface, probably on top of like Deputy's nice paperwork that he was looking at. <laughs> oh sheriff okay. uh, is the door open or closed to your office um i don't think this guy is the foresight to close it <laughs> <It's probably Aww>. open. <laughs> all right i'll just follow uh, that way for future <laughs> i'm so bad at this game <laughs> All right, so it has actually been a little bit of time since Lindsay announced her drink special, as Alex noted in the chat after that discussion. Um, so when you come over, Hale's place is hopping. It is shoulder to shoulder. Uh, folks are pushing through to get to the bar. And um, I don't know if any of you frequent 
her establishment that, that are going in. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Thomas, you see, she is serving the cheap crap uh, for sure. Like this is not anything you would serve your friends. It is, it is rot gut and uh, the stuff that has a reputation for blindness and other side effects. Maybe that's what happened to justice. She drank too much of the rot gut and now justice is blind. <laughs> Uh, and there is like a roar uh, of humanity. Nobody is particularly yelling, but just the I I increase of, you know, I need to talk a little bit louder because this person is talking. Uh, it's just uh, sort of a incomprehensible roar. And um, the the wood of the building is vibrating with the voices and the steps in it. And there's, it, it's, it's humid and unpleasant as you go in through the, of course, the classic batwing doors, because we have to have those. There's enough space in the people to have them open and shut behind you. And um, you see Lindsay is behind the bar, just kind of surveying everything. And she has her bartenders do, doing all the work. And she's just kind of like, um, I almost want to say a puppet master, where it's like, she knows exactly what's going on. She's like, no, you need to do that. That's got to get fixed. Do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nope. Eddie, I see you over there. Don't try that shit. And, uh, and so she has her finger on the pulse of what's going on in there as you walk in. And in fact, she does look up and make eye contact as your group of three walk in. What do you do? Um, I order a drink because you never like just go up and talk to Lindsay without ordering a drink first. It would be a little bit rude. Yeah. And I think, let me check your favor real quick. Yeah, the townsfolk uh, see you, and they they they're letting you through. Uh, if everybody wants to follow, actually, they're very excited to see Lee and Thomas because they're very popular folks in these parts, especially with their two part speech of justice of some kind will be done. <laughs> uh, so when you come in, you're a bit of a celebrity group for for capturing these three, and uh, someone's oh yeah, your drinks are on me, uh, and Lindsay says no, they're on me. <laughs> Uh, and the guy's like, oh, damn. <laughs> um, and she puts, she steps forward and puts a hand out to stop her bartender from pouring the, the crap whiskey. And like out of nowhere materializes this bottle of uh, single malt and Eversley pours three shots, pushes them forward to you three. Uh, and I, I'm going to let me know if this is not cool, Bethany, but you had like your money out to actually pay. And she's just like, I got yeah, that's it. fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, I kind of like, like, okay, Lindsay, um, what's the talk you're like right now? Well, they're, uh, they're pretty riled up. I'm trying to get them uh, really into a froth before we head over, but uh, some people aren't drinking as much as they could be. You know, folks are going to die. Three of them if we plan it, right? Yeah, it's going to be more than just those three. You get stuff like this happens. No, it never. It's never just the targets. It's there's people get hurt and you want this whole saloon full of drunk people shooting guns in the middle of the night not that look just we're gonna take him to the city tomorrow they're gonna hang him there she uh actually laughs not derisively but like that was comic Alonzo, you've been around. You know better than that. Nobody there gonna hang those folks. Unless Duke Cahill has suddenly gone poor. And I can tell you he hasn't because his gang is still in here spending coin like there's no tomorrow. The only way those folks are gonna hang is if we hang him. And the only way more than three folks are gonna die is if there's anyone trying to stop us. Why well, I figure we could maybe make a little deal. What you got in mind? 
there's a way for you to come out of this looking good. Uh, how close are Lee and Thomas at this point? Are, are you overhearing this? I was planning on finding someone else, so I might okay, be out of your shot. You grab your free whiskey and you head out, head away. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like I'm also talking to the crowd. Oh, okay, awesome. So this is not being overheard. She could be as uh, blunt as she would like. You know that I take care of business. You remember that man and what he did and how I left him and where we buried him. Yeah. We can take care of these guys the same way, deputy. And you and Sheriff Walter can come out smelling like roses. We just need somebody else to look bad. Now, you are a very popular man, as your reception here has shown, but I'm sure you've got a few enemies in your past. And uh, she actually glances uh, at Morgan, who is slumped over in a corner at this point, because even he has his limits. No deal, Lindsay. I'm not... I, I, I cannot take you up on that. So you're going to stand there between this town and what it wants? That's apparently that just became my job. Unless maybe the town could want something else. She nods, gives you a sad, sweet smile. What? Carter spread a lot of money and influence around in this town before they killed him. You got to let us at least get uh, one of them, deputy. Look, I don't even care if it's the one that did it. I do. That's kind of the problem. We don't know. Well, then let's go three for three. I got six in here. And she holds up the revolver that you have seen her use previously yeah that's two a piece and you know my aim ain't that bad uh, believe me Lindsay, i she won't you don't want to shoot the wrong person and we we do not we don't know that's what the trial's for find out there look if if they let them off at least we'll know who who did it and then you can take care of it how you see fit but justice delayed all... i'm yeah. sorry what were you saying so we don't they all just happened to be there when we got there but you know it, they were all just in the same house we didn't see which of them were at the coach we don't even know how many. I I get it, Alonzo. She was your fiance. <laughs> That's in the past. It doesn't have to be her. Give us one of the boys. A, a, a jailbreak gone wrong. You know they're dumb enough to try it on their own. You don't even have to set them up. Not Maybell. I apologize well, for that. She's true. an intelligent woman. Look. Let me try to find out who pulled the trigger. I'm not going to just give up one of my random. You're as noble as you are foolish, Debbie. <laughs> but I like you. No, if I was noble, I wouldn't be thinking about giving any of them up to you at all. Well, I guess we have very different definitions of noble. <laughs> she gives you a little chuck on the shoulder. <laughs> Can I get you another? Just, she pours you another glass. Uh, thanks. Look, I can just... 
keep them here for a while, okay? For let, you, I will. Let me let me investigate a bit. She nods to you and kind of fades back into the background uh, as the hustle and bustle collapses back upon you. Uh, where are our other saloon members? And also, Sheriff, let me know if you need to jump in with anything that's going on over there. Thomas, what were you uh, heading off? You said you were looking for somebody? I was going to go talk to Morgan if he isn't passed out entirely. We can make him not passed out. Then he slumped over, but we didn't say passed out, so that works out. <laughs> He's easy to find. Then. <laughs> and he's just kind of there like... He's got... um. A glass in his hand, but he just can't manage to lift it anymore. Um, he kind of sees you, looks up, bleary eyed. Thomas Morgan, it's good to see you. Never figured you for a posse member. Arresting folks and bringing them in. It's strange to me. Strange to me, too. But, you know, sometimes you just gotta take a stand to protect your own. Uh, all right. Share, share a drink with you? Was that sorry? Oh, share, share a drink with you. I won't sure. slur as much for my Morgan. <laughs> Assume that he is slurring his speech. Nice. Uh, he lifts up his glass to you and ends up tipping half of it out as he uh, does cheers with you. <laughs> to the old days and the old ways. To the old days. So I saw earlier you. Had a score to settle with the deputy. You know about that, don't you? Yeah. But this might be a good time to uh, settle that score. He, he looks interested. Yeah. See, this sheriff, he's, he's new blood. He's, he's like tumbleweed. No one can trust him. Now, if if something were to happen to those three no good people, I'm sure the sheriff would push the blame onto the deputy. <laughs> <laughs> that does seem like it would be in his character. So all I'm saying is. We just need to get the sheriff on our side. And this this whole thing, it's as good as done. We can take care of it our way. Uh, it sounds good except for the sheriff being on our side. Sheriff's only on the side of big business and new money. What well, makes you think he'll go along with what we want to do? I mean, he's up in his office alone right now and has the keys to the cell. I saw him right on that belt. You don't say. Thomas, could you get me some coffee? Sure uh, and he drops his, his whiskey glass on the ground and it rolls away with a little trickle of golden fluid coming out as the camera pans away. <laughs> nice. Oh, a diabolical Thomas Duval. <laughs> Very nice to see. Now we do things around here. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, Lee, who are you looking for? Uh, I was actually going to look for Carolina. Oh, yeah, she's definitely there. Uh, and I think she is moving around the crowd also. 
and kind of putting a, a word in this ear and a word in that ear. And um, as you're trying to maneuver to get to her, because it's very crowded, you notice that she also talks to Lindsay for a minute and leans over and whispers a few words in each other's ear. Um, and then you finally catch up with her. And I'm trying to remember. Did you talk to her already? Uh, I have not talked to her. I saw her talk to the deputy. That's um, right. So yeah, and I think I have a sense of uh, she's she's riling things up here. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you can you can catch up with her. Kind of gives you a look. Oh, Mr. Owens. Evening, evening, Miss Ruiz. Uh, what are you fixing to do tonight? <laughs> Just cut right to the chase. Yeah. I'm I see you. I see you whispering in a lot of ears. I'm celebrating your posse capturing the murderer of my fiance. Justice is being done. This is a moment to celebrate. Oh yeah, we we did some work, and it, it sure looks like uh, you're doing some work now too. Everyone uh, needs to grieve in their own way. And your idea of grieving is to uh, incite an angry mob to 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 just uh, rip rip all the work that we into this town uh, right down. What if it is, Mr. Owens? Do well, if it is, it, it shouldn't be. <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> I, what I have to say about this. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Um, I, uh, what did it take to to um, to get you to to stop uh, inciting this mob here? You wouldn't understand my position, Mister Owens, with your successful store and your beautiful house, and maybe your happy family that hasn't been mentioned previously that may or may not exist, <laughs> but would be in this list if it does exist. I have lost. Don't Every bring my beautiful family that may or may not exist into this. <laughs> my house was burned down. My fiance killed. I have nothing left. This town is literally not my home anymore. I, I, I have I a pile of ash and a dead man. You have everything to gain from this town i don't care if it does burn down right about now i'm willing to light that match i reckon i can't i, I can't fully understand what you're going through but uh i mean what i would say is it is i at least sympathize um when when your house burnt down who was who was the person who uh reached out to you to 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 try and get you back on your feet. Pre presumably you, I'm guessing, is what we're... I think you have a, a, a big stack of money. Um, Did you help that. out? I might yes. have missed it. Okay, all yeah. right. Um, uh, then that cows her a little bit when you, when you mentioned that. Um, and... And I had a, a lot counted on uh, Carter coming out here too. I'm uh, I'm right mad at, at whoever pulled that trigger. I know you were friends uh, with him. Uh, what I can't have, I can't have two innocent people, if that's the case, killed in some type of mob riot, and I can't have that getting getting out. We're trying to incorporate this town. We're trying to bring more people in. We're trying to bring more money and more businesses in. We're trying to bring more kids for you to be teaching and, and bring it up in the, the right ways of, of, uh, of uh, justice and honor and, and all them, them philosophies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we, can't, we can't tear it down over, over one thing or one person. I, I, I'm sorry, Carolina. We just can't. So... Yeah, yeah. 
You're willing to just throw away his memory? I thought you two was close. Here's what I think we do. I think I think we figure out who who did this. We find the right one. Does it matter who did this? They all done something. There's not a good person in that cell. You've seen what they do around here. All the Cahill's gang. You want to have a metropolis like the Dubac East? That ain't the kind of element you want running around. We need to root them all out. We can start tonight with the ones that took Carter from me and from you. The the powers that be are not gonna look not gonna look kindly on uh, us just killing people, wanton killing people uh, for what we think or don't think. Like this is how this is how the civilized world works. There's there's due process. Yes. I, I know the civics lessons that I teach the students. <laughs> I, I know you do. Uh, it, it just hurts so much to know they could get away with it. So that's what I'm saying. Let, let's find the one. Let's let's expose the one that did it. Let's make sure there's no way they can get out of it. So you think we're going to have detective work done by our fearless sheriff? By the way, where is he now? No, he didn't come to talk to me. <laughs> you know, the sheriff. <laughs> sheriff needs his needs his space sometimes. You come clean with me, Mr. Owens, and you tell me how you feel about our sheriff. <laughs> You think he's the kind of sheriff that they would have in a civilized land in the city that you want Seiko Creek to become? Your silence answers the question for me. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, uh, folks are telling me this story about a machine that has done has a <laughs> broke piece inside of it. <laughs> I don't know exactly what they mean. I don't even know why I'm sharing this story, but uh, <laughs> if it means something to you, uh, <laughs> you, can, you can take that to heart. Oh, it's too much. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Owens. <laughs> so that said, when there's a, a broken part as Sometimes you can't just pull that part out. You got to work around it for a little bit. And I, I'm fixing if if there is some metaphorical meaning to that story, and I'm not saying that there is, uh, I think you and I are going to need to work around the keys a little bit. Uh, that was beautiful and confusing, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> But it, I know I can be that way. I'm I a little I, slow. Uh, <laughs> no one's ever called you slow, Mr. Oates. <laughs> I, I know you do behind my back. <laughs> I feel like we're in a time loop now. <laughs> uh, I, I understand what you're saying. <sighs> what it take? I mean, if we get if we get the one, and we get them dead to rights, and I'm not saying we kill them. But we got it all laid out there. But I need you to not be telling this mob to be killing two innocent people or more or getting themselves killed. I, un I understand. I understand, Mr. Owens. I know how it would look to have a whole town rise up. No matter how justified it might be and, and kill, even if they're guilty, Kill, kill someone, how that would look to folks that might want to move here and might want to think of Seiko Creek as, as the new Chicago. Just them little cherub children, think of them, doing their spelling and arithmetic lessons in your classroom. That's what you want, right? <laughs> what do you want me to think about that? 
That's what you want. You don't want. You don't want to. Yeah, rap scallion outlaw children running around <laughs> throwing throwing things. Mr. Owens, you have not been in my classroom. It is quite clear to me. <laughs> Recognize as an aside, I am an elementary school teacher, so there's some bleed coming. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm pretty sure I do have the outlaw children. Thank you very much. Uh, you, you you make a good point, Mr. Owens. Um, I, I apologize for letting vengeance get the best of me and obscure my vision uh, of the grander picture uh, and, and how this machine you're talking about ought to work. I, I do appreciate it. I again, I, I cannot fully understand what you are going through, and I, I know that this is just more difficulty on top of that. But I sincerely appreciate, it, and the, the the future of this town does too. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll try not to let it any further. Uh, and oh, we got we got a lot of comments. I'm scrolling back up here to where our sheriff is. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking I want to see the sheriff drinking with the outlaws, not necessarily with the outlaws, but maybe with the outlaws. <laughs> um, and then probably take another bio break and then come together for the, the final chapter, if that sounds good, folks. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so as the sheriff is getting himself steadily drunk in the company of outlaws, what does this look like? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, th I think like, I think what happened is like the sheriff was like, I can, I can have a drink, right? Like everyone else is celebrating, like is a bottle of whiskey in my desk. Like, um, so I think he like, uh, probably poured himself like a drink and I think probably got it in his head. Like, Oh, if I look her up these, if I look her up these, uh, <laughs> these outlaws, like maybe, maybe I'll learn a thing or two about like, uh, like what actually happened and like, dude, <laughs> Like, I think that I think that was his thought process. This, this is why he needs his deputy around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave him alone for a minute. And I think, yeah, he, he probably what have he what have he done? Is it all sort of like a chummy way? Like you're drinking, you're like, looks like you three have had a hard day. Would you like? Yeah, I think he he's probably like he's probably in the seat that like Morgan was in, like the one like closer to like the the jail cell. Mm -hmm. Um, and oh uh, yeah, he probably had like. Um, like maybe a third of a bottle left or something. So like poured himself like a drink and then sort of passed the bottle like into the into the jail cell so they could like you know like share a bit of whiskey. Um, uh, Trevor will take it from you. Yeah. Much obliged, Sheriff. Thank you. Well, I know uh, my my pleasure, Trevor. I know you and I were pretty tight. But, you know, at least uh, I think it, it, it probably is very very tight. Because of his booze lips, <laughs> you probably made it more like you know, like we we respect each other in a kind of mm -hmm. way. yeah. Like you know the way of the world, sheriff. Uh, your your side of the bars and I side of the bars ain't that different. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know what you mean. I, I feel I feel like uh, sometimes this place is my own jail cell. You know, like uh, people keep coming in here and pestering me and telling me what to do and keeping me trapped. Yeah, you got to play the hand you're dealt, I suppose. Yeah, you know it. But, uh, yeah. I mean, hey, I've held up my side of the bargain, at least, right? No one's come in here to pester you guys. Or you. He, like, toasts with the bottle. Like, the sheriff also toasts. <clears throat> Seems like it'll be a good night. We'll, uh, while away uh, our time here at the Hotel Walter. <laughs> And be off on the grand tour tomorrow at three ten. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do your sheet. I'll uh, make sure you get clean for a pair of sheets and everything. Plump your pillow real good. I uh, always said the service here is incredible. <laughs> uh, he passes okay. the bottle around to the other two folks. Always happy to, you know, have some happy customers. I uh, hey, tell me, like, what? I mean, we, we can talk, right? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a rap session. Yeah, like what? What really? What? What went down? Like I, I won't tell anyone. You know, like <laughs> just, just between you and me. Just between you and me. What are you talking about, Sheriff? Well, you know, I just, 
this, I guess for my own curiosity's sake, you know, like, I, I, I don't know, I don't really have skin in this game. I'm just doing my job. I mean. Oh, what, what happened with that dandy and the coach? Yeah. Yeah, and then he sort of feels a bit, he, he takes a drink, or like you mentioned, <laughs> mentioned his now deceased lover. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think actually they make it a little bit worse by um, making fun of Carter a little bit more and like you know that, that tender foot it, uh, he didn't even know which end of the stagecoach to get out of or something like that period yeah. appropriate insults uh, just to make it a little bit harder for you sure if you know how it is there's collateral damage. Uh, men of violence like us, things happen when you're doing your job. I mean, I don't think every party you've apprehended has uh, come in uh, vertically. Do you understand what I'm saying? <clears throat> if not, I can clarify. <laughs> Please, like, I think like, he puts a hand through the bar to, like, you know, take the bottle as for, like, his, I think he's finished his own drink. He's like, oh, please clarify. Sometimes folks get shot, even if that ain't the purpose of what you're doing that day. It wasn't like we had anything against him. I mean, hell, he would have been great to rob for years to come if he'd have made it here to Seiko Creek. <laughs> More money than sense is what they say about folks like that. Sheriff, like, takes, like, a he sits wig and like hands the bottle back through the bars. Like swallows it down. And uh and he says, uh Yeah, I know how it goes. Like I've been in this job a long time and uh I, I get that people I, I get I get that sometimes things happen. But uh yeah, I I, I gotta say, I think this place would have been would have been better off with Carter in it than that. I wish I told him that. Why? Why would you tell him that? Oh, you know, uh, he and I bumped into each other. And Taddy, you know, it's like you say, good, good money. Taddy will be way better off with a minute. Are you convincing with this, or is there definitely a, a crack in the armor showing? Definitely a crack in the armor showing. Okay. <laughs> I think Maybell especially picks up on it. Like you're just kind of sitting there listening, like, huh. <laughs> Like, like sheriff probably like sort of like uses his knuckle to wipe it his like lip and it would have to like sort of hide the faint blush that's like spread over his cheeks which is definitely a blush because he's had booze and not a blush because he's mm -hmm. feeling like embarrassed <laughs> boy you're having trouble holding your liquor there sheriff uh, it's, it's, uh, i should have had more to eat today i suppose i uh, hope you don't have to handle a gun tonight or else you might be making one of the same mistakes we made <laughs> no I, i'm a sure shot but don't you worry about it <laughs> they look a little worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I guess there's no point thinking about it, right? Like, I just, God is gone. God oh, that was, yeah, that was his name? Uh, yeah, that, that sounds like an Eastern name, don't it? Yeah, well, uh, more's, more's the pity, I guess. Less funds. Yeah, a lot less fun. A lot less fun. No, not not fun. Funds. Funds. Oh, fun. Money. Oh, I uh, I apologize. At this point, maybe I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> 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 Actually, yeah, you know what? She'll say, "Sheriff, is there something you need to tell us?" <laughs> oh, if I did this again, like it's it's in the past. Like we're all just drinking buddies here now, right? These <laughs> bars don't matter. Oh. Oh man. Ah, I never should be telling you this. But uh tell me and uh I guess it doesn't matter. Cut is cut is gone. He he and I were pretty sweet. Uh like me and your deputy were? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, like less commitment, but you know, uh, it, it's been by town. We'd we'd uh, we'd catch up. Uh, Trevor hoots. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor, I didn't know you had it in you, Sheriff. Oh, God. or you had it in him, as the case were. Uh, Trevor, <laughs> eat shut up. <laughs> Oh dang! Oh dang! Yeah, we so are. I, I don't appreciate you guys um, yeah, making fun of making fun of my Jake Hutter. No, I saw. Oh, well, we didn't know. We didn't know, Sheriff. I'm sorry. That'd be off limits. You know, there's rules in our little game. Damn! I am sorry that we killed him. <laughs> it, it, it was an accident. Maybell did not mean to pull the trigger. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah. I think like almost like <laughs> Sheriff almost misses that because he's just like thinking much about Carter. Um, then he talks about anyway. I think he says, oh, Mabel, I can't, I can't believe you shot Carter. You're usually a really good shot. What happened? It was the gun. Duke gave us a piece of shit, long piece, and it just went off when I pointed it at him. Is that really what happened? Yes. I don't want to kill anybody. Again. Well, I certainly would have killed him if I'd have known, but <laughs> who? I mean, and... Duke can get us out of anything, but murder is going to cost him extra. <sighs> the judge doubles his rates for murder and a fancy guy like your boyfriend is going to cost plenty to get us off Bright City. Hey, he was my boyfriend, all right? He was, uh, he was happily betrothed. Well, I don't I don't want to label what you two had, but clearly he was special to you. Gosh, jeez. I apologize. I understand what it's like to lose somebody. I did not mean to kill him. And this is it's this it's gonna come out of my cut of the job, I'll tell you that, what Duke has to pay. For that I I wish I could say I feel bad for you, but uh Oh no, I'm not not asking not asking for that. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I I I guess I, I appreciate that. Wait. Did his fiance know? Oh uh Carolina? Oh yeah, yeah, that's her name, right? Yeah. Uh she didn't know, did she? I mean I hope not. I mean, she's been giving me I mean she's been giving me the evil eye ever since before uh Cutter and I you know, but uh, yeah. it's been getting a lot worse. Have you not noticed that pretty much all the townsfolk give you the evil eye? No, what are you talking about? Yeah, all right. Well, it has to be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, have another drink. <laughs> He'll take the bottle like off of her and take a swig and then like pass it back. Uh, he'll say, like, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, she might just. Maybe she's a sick something, but she she didn't know. <laughs> like that you kind of wavering back and forth between it. Yeah, no, no, for sure this. No, the other thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, well, you're, not, you're not gonna tell her, are you? Well, we're in jail right now. You may have noticed. <laughs> I forget that sometimes. Maybe this has gone to my head. <laughs> well, no use not finishing it now. <laughs> There's not enough left to save. Oh, please. My bell, though. The honor is yours. Uh, and I don't know that you would have noticed this, given the emotions and the alcohol and all that, but uh, after they realized what was going on, they only were pretending to take drinks of it, so they would leave it for you. Nice. Um, so they try that again, and I don't know if you notice that it comes back still with some <laughs> in it. But. I don't think he does. <laughs> <laughs> And hey, he to uh, to what was his name? Carter. Carter, your friend. To Carter. To Carter. <laughs> he like raises the bottle and like downs the rest of it. Uh, so I think we need to give you the consequence of drunk. <laughs> to make a note of that because you have been going all in on that. <laughs> I am the worst. I'm so sorry. You're the best worst sheriff. <laughs> Um, I, I is it, does that go under cost? Yeah, you can just type it in there. Drunk. This is going to go so well. I have the keys. 
I'm feeling confident <laughs> and I'm a good shot. <laughs> yes, this will go really well. I think that is a good place for our second break. Uh, I just want to check in with people and see where your character's head's at. Like, what do you think the ideal outcome would be and what plans you have in motion? Um, I think think I have some ideas, but I want to make sure that I know for sure as we enter the final act. Uh, so Sheriff, what would you like to have happen if you got your oats? Oh, I just want Cotter back. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that that's kind of like where I think like um, where uh, our dear Sheriff's head is at. Is I think he, he kind of like um, he He's in, a, he's in a weird space where, yeah, he, he misses Carter. He wants Carter back, but he gets what happened, and he's a strong and uh, he, he's a bit of a loose cannon in that, in that regard. I, I am totally fine with whatever happens to, to our sheriff. So it seems like he does not have a plan regarding the prisoners. Like, do you still so. want to carry out your duty? Or. Yeah. Yeah, his duty in the sense, like, he's got a job, which is to keep these people, like, contained in this place until, like, they're going to be cut off for on the train to justice, right? Yeah, I guess that, TM. I guess it <laughs> is sort of the, uh, the the solid thing that you have now. Yeah, so I think he's, um, I think he's, he's pretty on board with that unless, like, um, someone can persuade him otherwise, which uh, may be easier now that he's at the job. And even knowing who shot... Uh, I, yeah, or at least you claimed it. Yeah, I almost wonder if that's a thing where, like, given a bit of time to stew on it, and given a bit of time for like the alcohol to sort of take effect, it might become like more of a like drive for for him for that to come out for him to like take action against that. And you can marinate on that over our bio break as well and see what Yay. you think. <laughs> uh, Deputy, what do you wish would happen? Oh, man. I just... Uh, I I just don't... So, like... On the one hand, you know, Lindsay's, Lindsay's right. Um, like, you know, they probably will be back if we ship them off on the, the the train to justice um <laughs> but like the best recurring taglines in this this game yeah um you know and 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 that is a problem and i i uh, so like i'm sympathetic to her but also like there's no way this turns out well if they decide to like storm the jail um so I, I think I, I think what I told Lindsay, I, I think I I think I meant it at the time. Like, you know, let me find out who did what and give you a name. Now, far in the back of my mind is this worry that it might be Maybell. But I'm real I'm trying real hard to to not think about that at the moment. Well, don't go back to the jail because you don't want to hear what's going <laughs> yeah. on. Uh, okay, and Lee, what are you hoping would happen? I feel like I have a clear picture on that, but we'll see. Uh, yeah, I mean, Lee is uh, holding on to his ideals and just trying to, like, essentially, like, stall the mob, right? And um... Would you say that as long as they get on that train, you don't really care what happens next? Yeah, I mean, Lee is... Lee has also felt the benefit of having this group in town and around town. So, um, yeah, I mean, if they're, if they're locked up, that's great. And that like wins over the town, like it's going to be a problem down the road, um, if they come back in some way. Um, but yeah, I think perhaps my concern is and the townspeople are slowly convincing me of this is that, we don't necessarily have the the hand of the law that's needed to run a, a, an incorporated town. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like um, there's something going on there in Lee's head. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and 
Thomas, I'm not really sure what you've got going on, but I feel like there's wheels within wheels. What are you hoping the outcome will be? I mean, I'm kind of the opposite of Lee. Like, I don't care what happens as long as they don't get on that train. <laughs> so, wait, what are the options of not getting, like, if they wander off into the forest, that's okay. If they get there I by know. buggy, would you be? <laughs> as long as we are the ones to decide what happens. I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh -huh. But when you say we, who does that include? The town, of course. So personified by me and Morgan right now. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> we need friends saying we need to kill them. So let's give the town what they want. <laughs> the wisdom of crowds. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, everyone should get what they want. All right. Sounds good. Uh, just checking in if anyone has experience points that they want to spend. You can either turn that in in advance for getting a favor in any faction you want. Um, just try to think about how it would have happened. Like Sheriff getting a favor with the townsfolk. I don't know that I would see right now because you have been hiding in your office the whole time. So I'm not sure how you would have increased. <laughs> uh, but you could sell me on it maybe. Also, if you want to get a new privilege for an advance, if you have four XP, they are on the fourth tab of the character keeper. Uh, and they do what they say on the tin. Other than that, should we take another five minute break? Does that sound good for folks? That works. A couple of oh, I don't think I, I didn't, I didn't get an advance, but I think I did hit that um, uh, when you reason with the sheriff and he doesn't listen. Um, I think I can probably steal a, a uh, faction point from the sheriff for that. It's believable, yeah. Yes, do it. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not going to steal an outlaw one because, like, you are like, you're good friends with the outlaws right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I can. I, I think I can take a merchant one. So I've been talking yeah. to Lindsay. So yeah, that, that totally makes sense. And I'll knock uh, that down to three. And that knocks you up to three with the merchants. Yep, that makes sense. I feel like you have their interests a little more at heart now, rather than the sheriff drinking with the outlaws. Yeah, until I learn who actually pulled the trigger, and then I might not anymore. <laughs> I can't wait to find out. Uh, all right, so we'll take a five minute break, and then we'll see how long the the last scene goes. But I'm guessing like 30, 35 minutes. So folks who are done, uh, or who have another game after this, will have a little bit of free time. See you in five.
am <clears throat> so I never really want to start the final chapter off, but I have a, I have a scene in mind for I'm um, talking to the deputy about <clears throat> about what happened. And that might be a, a good part to do it, yeah. I was like over break thinking, do we want to have a little time jump or just go right where we are? Because I feel like we're uh we're at the top of the roller coaster hill, right about there. Like, yeah, okay. It's gonna start going. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I think I think I know how to kick it off. <laughs> and how many people have a game after this one? Pick me and me and Bethany. It's impressive. <laughs> like, I, I was like, I have to be more kind to myself than I have been with things and be like, mm, I need definite breaks. And like, <laughs> I do tend to over schedule because like games are fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Really but like you're running this one. So that kind of, that's a little harder than just playing. It, yeah. Like I wouldn't want to have done something before this. Maybe I yeah. could do something after. Although I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, are you there in invisible? Oh, you can hear. Okay. Cool. So, uh, unless anybody needed to do something uh, who was in the, the the saloon, which I guess was everyone but the sheriff, so Lee Thomas and Alonzo, uh, it seems like we're probably ending up back at the uh, sheriff's office, unless folks need to run somewhere real quick for part of their plans, nefarious or otherwise. Okay. Lauren, what were you thinking that you wanted to have for that scene? Now that you have a drink in your mouth, go, go, go. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I was thinking, like, I was like, what would, what would, like, this guy do? He's a bit drunk. He's, like, probably feeling it, like, it's probably hitting him a bit, Um, what, like, Maybell said. And I think what he'd probably do is he'd probably go to his deputy and be like, you got to take these keys because, like, I've learned this stuff. You know, like, I can't, <laughs> like, if, if, uh, if these keys stay with me, I know I know bad things are going to happen, and I think he's going to probably like over impart like everything he knows onto onto our dear deputy because he's like had a bit of drink. That, that was my plan. <laughs> Is that a like seek out the deputy uh, across the way at the saloon? Yeah, I think so. There? Yeah, I, I think like I'm leaving the saloon on my way back. Way back when I yeah ran right into the. Oh, sheriff. definitely on the street. Yes, maybe even on just the, the, the raised porch bed of the sheriff's office yeah. is where that should happen. That's fantastic. Excellent. So should we do that scene? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. <clears throat> yeah, so um, uh, yes, our sheriff, like, is probably, he's, yeah, he can walk okay. <laughs> he's not, like, drunk for us. Um, but he, like, is making a beeline for the saloon, and I think he sees, like, our, our deputy, and he, I think he calls out a bit, like, when he's um, in close enough ear shot to be like, and you can tell he's in a bit of a stake. So he, he says like Alonzo, it's Alonzo, right? Yeah. Yeah, he says, I like Alonzo. Aren't you drunk? No, I, I, I mean, I, I, had a, I had a couple of whiskeys in the, in the office, but I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not this, drunk drunk. This is not the night to be drunk. I know. Somebody in this town needs to be sober. I know, and like this, that's why I had to come find you. I uh, like take these. I think he's like thrusts the keys like into your, into your hand. Yeah, all right. Like, Wait. I uh, I don't know what to. Say. I don't know what to say, Alonzo. I'm so sorry. About. About. Oh, about Mabel. Shit, shit. Oh, God, you don't get no. it. She, she, she killed Carter. She, I, I love Carter. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. You know. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Can I have a hug? Yeah, yeah. Sure. We like pull you into a hug, and like he probably like yeah it's, it says again like you're and your wet shoulder now. <laughs> He's a bit teared yeah. up. Like I I I, I look. I just want him to come back. I... Yeah. 
Yes, that is. So is Carolina. I. Oh, shut Yeah. And he like pushes back enough and he says like, look, you've got to be the responsible one here because I didn't. <laughs> I uh, you give me keys and bad news, and and now I have to be the responsible one. Is it? I'm a, I'm afraid of what I'll do. If, uh, I'm I'm a great shot. I like. I just don't want to do anything I'd regret, you know. All right, all right. Look, I'll take the keys. Um, oh, thanks, Hero Champ. Why don't you go get some some real strong black coffee? I think Lindsay's probably probably got that's, something. That's a good idea that you've put in my brain. You're right. I was, and, thinking, um, I was thinking I should go get some coffee. Yeah. Uh, try not to. Um, well, watch out. Some of the people there are, you know, they're drunk and they're mad and you're in their way. We're both in their way. So just be careful. I don't know how this happened. Well, thanks. You. Thank you for taking care of me. I like pat him on the shoulder. Like, go, go on. Go, you know. yeah. uh, Sheriff, just to check, you you have a zero favor with the townsfolk who are drunk <laughs> in the saloon? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure you know that before you go ahead. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. This little scene played out on the street. Were either Lee or Thomas in eyesight of this? I would Thomas, say eyesight. Yeah, you could see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and Thomas, I imagine Morgan is at least a little bit ambulatory and can walk with you uh, wherever you wish to guide him since you two were, were working together. So, Do you think that you saw it as well? For Thomas, yeah, we're on our way there. Yeah, it kind of we're makes like sense. about to go in, and then we saw them talking. It's like, oh wait, wait, wait. Shh. So as the sheriff is heading towards the saloon, uh, are Thomas and Lee heading towards the sheriff, away from the sheriff, ignoring the sheriff? Oh man! Or I'm vice follow versa. The sheriff. What's that? I'm gonna follow the sheriff. Um, and I'm trying to keep out of notice of the sheriff. Okay, I'm probably heading back to the Shouldn't office. Be hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like the sheriff. Yeah, I got a myopic right now. Like, what? Lee Owens? I didn't see him at all. Okay, so we have uh, the sheriff heading towards the sobering effects of coffee, uh, followed by Thomas. Um, the deputy has now gotten the keys and Lee is also heading back to the office. Although actually, I don't know, uh, deputy, are you going into the office? You were headed that direction. Okay. And Lee is just a few paces behind you, I would think. Uh, yeah, actually, let's see what happens there first before we go to the saloon. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I I walk in and shut the door and kind of lean against the wall but next like next to the the cell not right not against the bars and just kind of like god damn it Maybell what what did you do when you shut the door uh were you shutting out Owens? Uh, yeah, if I noticed him following me. <laughs> Fuck. Deputy? Is it closed or is it locked? Um, I think it's just closed. I'm being polite. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Um, With my incessant knocking. Okay, just like. Deputy, everything okay in there? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. 
Uh, Your quick question regarding Deputy Marquez. When you were engaged to Maybell, was she an outlaw? No, I don't think she was. Okay. I think this is a relatively recent development. Boy, I have so many questions about your relationship. We just don't have time to get into all of them. Uh, okay, so you just asked her what she did. And she's kind of in the same posture you are, but just on the other side of the bars, like mirroring you. Mm -hmm. right. What is it that you told me just before we broke it off? Sometimes things happen that we don't want to have happen. Yeah, it didn't. I'm guessing uh, our drinking buddy told you everything. Yeah. Is there still incessant knocking outside? <laughs> oh, I was just asked, how possible okay. is it that I uh, have creaked the door ever so slightly open so that I can hear what's going on? Because I don't trust. It's pretty possible. I don't trust either of our law keepers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the deputy is uh, pretty engaged in what's happening. Yeah. So you could certainly be eavesdropping on this then. Yeah, I'm eavesdropping for at least for the moment. Yeah. Alonzo, it ain't the first time either one of us has killed someone. Yeah, no kidding. And Trevor's like, she didn't mean to. As if that absolves for everything. Right. Yeah, except except I have reason to be sympathetic to that particular thing. Um, <laughs> uh, Should I be worried that you're in here? That you shut the door so nobody else can get in? Yeah, well... Uh, yes, yes, you should fucking be worried because there's a crowd of people getting really drunk right now. We're going to come in here and kill you all. Probably me too, because Fuck I'm supposed to them. stand between them and you. What? How could you let this happen? Me. Yeah, you, the one with the badge and the gun on the other side of the bars. There's, uh, fuck, I was going to say that there's two of us against an entire town. Really, there's one of us against an entire town. The sheriff knows his place. He knows he's got to protect us or else Duke will come down on him. That's... Not sure which sense in the, you mean and I'm in, but <laughs> yeah, it was a double entendre, wasn't it? <laughs> I. You're gonna fucking let them, aren't you? No. No, I'm not. And look me in the eyes and tell me that you're not. I'm, I'm not looking you in the eyes right now. Pay attention you to never what could I look am doing. Guys, when you were lying, Mabel, pay attention to what I am doing. And I like move a little bit closer to the bar with the keys attached to my belt. She kind of isn't quite sure. She tentatively I reaches out, a, reaches out a hand. And she'll take them from you. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. And then I turn around and, and, and right then I, I, come then in. I get up or I, I, you know, kind of push off the walls. Uh, go, go let him in. I'm assuming that she hides the keys. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think she has them out. No, that would probably be a bad plan. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is probably a good place to pause. Whatever's happening in the saloon may inform what happens next in the sheriff's <laughs> office. <laughs> okay, this is whew, good stuff. That was uh, amazing.
All right, so Sheriff, you're walking into the saloon. Yeah, did um, what were your, oh shoot, Thomas? Like, what was what was your intent? Like, what, did, what was our? I just wanted to have a friendly, not intimidating at all discussion. <laughs> Would you prefer to have that in the saloon or outside of the saloon? Oh, that is a very good question. <laughs> Go for in the saloon. Why not? Perfect. Yes, I'm totally going into the saloon. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, all right. So uh, you walk into the saloon, and as people notice you, they kind of quiet down, uh, but not in a respectful way. <laughs> Just did like a really. Uh, and and there's some hooting, and uh, what's what's the? Can't think of the term I'm looking for. Rude noises are happening in your direction that I can't remember the word I'm looking for. Uh, as you walk in and some booze. There we go. That'll work. Oh, I think like you get that like like shot of um the sheriff like sort of waving them off with a very like um like dead hand kind of thing. Like he's there's a lot of like drunken weight behind like uh -huh. the picture. Um any like well sort of make a beeline for for Lindsay. Like, ah, like. Uh, OK. Look who showed his face. Oh, we can't believe it. And I think he turns around and he's like, oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> he's like, get off my back. Like, I've had a really rough day. <laughs> and you all are just making it a lot worse. <laughs> I think that's confusing to them. <laughs> Is the sheriff asking for sympathy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the confusion buys you a few seconds to get over to Lindsay if you'd like. Um, if Thomas actually is letting you walk that far in the saloon, I'm not sure where Thomas wants to have this discussion. Yeah. Do you want to talk to Lindsay first or be confronted? I think confronted. All right, sweet ass. Like as you go to turn back to Lindsay, up, like after this confused crowd kind of looks at you, feels very large and leathery hand on your shoulder, pull you back. Say, like, oh, Sheriff, just the person I wanted to see. We definitely get that shot of like sort of um, him overcompensating, right, for like you grabbing him because he's like a little bit like swaggy. And he, uh, he turns around with like the hand on his shoulder and he's like, uh, it's Thomas. What do you want? I just wanted to have a friendly chat about how we like gestures to both Thomas and like the people around us. I think this town should work. You seem trying to sober up a bit <laughs> um, and like straighten his shoulders. Yeah. What do Val saying? Yeah. I want it. I couldn't possibly imagine what you are proposing here. And he's trying to, he's trying to, his speech, he's trying to be very formal with his speech, but he's overcompensating again because he's like a little bit drunk. Because <laughs> this warm smile from Thomas at this incredibly drunk sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> but comment, he's even easier than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thomas will say, look. A lot of us here, me included, just don't like how these people from these tenderfoots way out in the east are telling us how we should work. I mean, this is our town that these outlaws are, are messing with. Surely it should be us who decide what happens. What? I gave the deputy the keys. So you shouldn't be talking to me. You should be going talking to the fucking deputy, uh, deputy Marquez. I mean, if you're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't, like, I don't, I, mean, I think he puts, like, very sincere, like, hands on your shoulders and he looks you dead in the eye and he's like, I don't care what happens anymore. I'm drunk and sad. 
And whatever you want to do with those folks up there, like, I'm done with it. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think you've increased your townsfolk standing. <laughs> <laughs> Giving them what they want. Yay. <laughs> Now they are only neutral. <laughs> In the worst possible way. <laughs> it's like, thank look. you, Shira. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank yeah, you. look. Hug Drinks on me. <laughs> right, I say justice is blind or whatever. <laughs> blind drunk. <laughs> uh, so they look at you, Thomas, to see if you are heading across. Because they're willing to go with. Oh them. yeah. All Round them right, so up. Let's go. Column of people, you're you're rounding up and heading out across the street, where we have uh, the. Uh, well, I, actually, I guess I don't know if I want to say confrontation. We'll see really quickly. Uh, and sheriff, are you sticking around in the saloon? Oh, good question. I think like. I, it's more interesting if you follow us along. I think he probably would have, like, oh, what is more interesting? I don't know. Oh, this well, is why don't you stay there for now? And then if you want to spring up in the middle of action and be like, hey, it's me, the sheriff. That's totally cool. I just want to sit here and eat popcorn and watch this blow up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if many ways you go wrong. If appropriate, uh, I will pop up. But otherwise, I'm keen to see all this go down. If you have bought off one of your keys, that gets you in advance, so you can either add favor or get a new privilege. Just a reminder for people that are buying off their keys in incredibly appropriate way. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. yeah. See how that's Yeah, with extreme prejudice. <laughs> Here, let yourself out. Yeah, oh, I okay. bought a new privilege. Uh, oh, what did you get? I, I didn't get the obvious one. Um, because that would, yeah, no, that's that would that would be cheating. Uh, but I did get because you're vast in vast in region, reason. When another character uses violence against you, you may transfer one favor from their sheet to yours. All right, sounds good. Uh, yeah, that's believable, Lauren. Yeah, I think go do what you want to those people is probably not. <laughs> probably what not. Yeah. Say <laughs> in, in most regards. All right, so. Um, we have the impending mob, but there's still a few moments, I think, between when they show up and when Lee has come in um, uh, after the keys have been exchanged. So, yeah, I think Lee was hoping to butt in before the keys were exchanged, but was a little slow on that and <laughs> so knows that the keys have been exchanged. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, um, so he kind of uh, looks to the deputy who's opened the door and kind of like looks into the cell at Mabel and realizes he doesn't want anyone to know that he saw what happened. Um, so kind of like shifts, I shift my gaze to the other ones, but then like just naturally instinctively like land back on Mabel to see if I can see where she's got the keys and then look back at the deputy and just say, uh, evening deputy. Uh, Everything all right out there? Um, you, uh, things are things seem to be calming down a little bit. At least last I checked in. Uh, yeah, you did your best. <laughs> worked that's for good. a little while. Um, Thanks. That's the, good job. Uh, how are things looking in here? I mean, pretty quiet so far. I'm. Uh, you must have been talking to um yeah trying to trying to find out who's you know which of these fools actually did it you know just in case we need to know you start to hear uh the noises of the crowd at that point um obviously just certain yelling and the stomping of feet and also there's some of them chanting hang them high <laughs> right i think i like kind of put my hand on lee's arm I'm like okay look you're good at talking reason to these people let's go try to talk to them what? you're gonna talk the, the this is uh maybell freaking out in the cell you're gonna talk your way out of these people wanting to hang us 
No, yes. no, fuck that. Alonzo. Uh, and she pulls out the keys. God damn it. Puts <laughs> him in the cell. And yes. unlocks the door. And unless you want to stop her, she is off like a shot with the other two behind her. I, no, I, I'm not going to stop her. I mean, I got the keys to her for a reason. Lee, you also could. I am uh, yelling at them, and I'm like, Mabel, Trevor, uh, who's the third one that we don't talk Billy. to? Uh, Billy. <laughs> Billy. Uh, you know you're getting out of this if you stay inside that cell. If we ship you out, like, you know that, what, 80, 20 odds that you get out just fine. You go out there, I... I think it's a 2080 situation for y'all. And let me tell you, I think this town's been good to you. You got a, you got the law protecting you apparently. You even have some powerful friends, I, I do believe. Uh, I, I think you, I think you want this town to stick on. You can't just go anywhere you want and get what you've gotten out of this town. <laughs> I don't even know if you tell me that. I'm just monologuing. <laughs> I was like, that's that's pretty convincing, actually. Um, uh, Mabel looks back and forth between you, grabs Alonzo by the lapels and says, if we go back in that cell, can you guarantee that we'll be safe? Can you guarantee that you'll be safe? That's what I thought. Uh, and she, I can't she guarantee is... anybody will be safe if you run out that door. I think he's right. You're safer in here. But if you leave, leave. Don't come back to this town. Uh, she reaches down to grab your gun. Uh, I, I grab it. <laughs> you're right. It's not safe out there. Great. You don't let her have it. I think I put my hand on it. And then when she says that, I think I let go. <laughs> All right. Uh, she grabs it. It is heading out the door. Mr. Owens, I wish your town well. And she goes out there with Trevor and Billy. Uh, and that is when, I don't know where the sheriff is at this point, but Thomas, I'm guessing you are in this mix of the of the uh, mob. Oh, yeah. Popping uh, up. Morgan, you see, I think. It is kind of dark at this point. So I'm guessing you may not be able to tell who exactly... It is, but you do see three folks tearing ass out of the the office. Well, I mean, when there's people running away, it's only one thing to do, right? <laughs> it is suspicious. Uh, what do you do? You say anything, or do you just lead by example? Uh, I think a confused chat of "What the hell?" and then just like a, a dash. Uh, so yeah, okay, so I guess all of the the people with you are probably going to follow that example. That, that, that must be them! Get them! Get them! It's a jailbreak! Uh, with no one really thinking, how could they have a jailbreak? I mean, that's an interesting question that no one really has the cognitive resources to, to think about right now. Uh, Deputy and Lee, are you staying in the office, or where are you? Catch me up on what happened when I disconnected. Oh, sorry. I wasn't sure how long you're going for. Um, they, Maybell put her hand on the deputy's gun and he eventually let her take it as she ran off into the night. <laughs> and uh, this was seen, well, not the gun part, but the running out into the night was seen by Thomas and the mob. Oh, and she said, we wish your town well, Mr. Owens, on the way out. And the, the rest of them ran off too? Yeah, the three three outlaws okay. ran out. All right. 
Well, shit. <laughs> what was the prompt question again? <laughs> Do you stay in the sheriff's office or are you trying to intervene in this? I think like Lee, I just like walk into the cell and sit down on a bed <laughs> and just put my head in my hands and just awesome. Uh, that I think we can draw a veil over what probably happens next. Um, unless Thomas, you you want to give us the real quick summary of. Yeah, I mean, you, you're going to catch up with them. One of them I is I think armed. Thomas doesn't actually. Thomas is oh. he's old. I think he has to, like, slow down and take a breath. So he doesn't actually see what happens to them. Interesting. All right. Then uh, we'll leave that for the epilogue to find out what actually happened with them. That means one of you guys is going to have to say it. I, I'm totally discharging that responsibility. All right. Epilogue. I think I'm sitting in a jail cell with uh, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> we all sit in the jail cell. <laughs> all uh, sitting in jail, passing the whiskey around. <laughs> just, everybody, everybody get in there. We're switching sides. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Uh, so we're going to start actually with the politicians faction. Oh, you guys are hated by the politicians. That's why they never showed up. We actually didn't see anybody from that faction. Every every time I run this game, there's a first. That was one of them this time. Uh, so Lauren, Bethany, and Mike, you are all tied with one in neutral regard for the politicians. Uh, so it is on you to decide, is the town incorporated after the events of this night? Probably not. I think Lee is the most invested in this, so <laughs> you got you got this, Lee. I think the dream is is delayed. Um, yeah, I think uh, Clayton Dix is kind of happy with the results of this. Maybe it turns out that he was uh, planting some seeds of his own from an upstairs room in the saloon or something like that. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, or maybe he initialized the mob. Maybe he sort of like got people moving out there and that kind of thing. And then wrapped up, um, uh, who's the other guy? Oh, El... El... yeah. So he kind of like wrapped him up in something so that he wouldn't be able to, to help out in dissolving the situation. And yeah, the town was not incorporated. Not after that. My goodness. That was horrible. I don't know how horrible yet, but we'll find out. Uh, for our townsfolk, we also have a tie, uh, Alex and Mike. How do the townsfolk... Well, actually, you know what? I think we need to go out of order because I need to know exactly what happened. Um, so we'll say our outlaws folks, uh, which are Lauren and... Be we got a lot of ties. Lauren and Bethany are both considered part of the group for the outlaws. Makes uh, sense. What, what happened to these outlaws? Oh, what do you, what do you th I mean, Be Bethany, uh, you, you have a... You have a uh, love for God, I don't know. Um, Did any of them survive? Don't know. Uh, uh, if they didn't, I don't think our characters know it. Well, this you can do from a uh, okay. larger view. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I, I like mean, my guess is once the mob is riled up. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm torn because it, uh, it feels on tone for them to be okay because they're a very like whimsical, like kind of like 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 a real dark at the end there. But um, yeah. I mean, but I think like it, they probably would have died. <laughs> um, I think that's why I'm torn. What do you think, Bethany? Um, yeah, I, I, I I'm kind of the same way. Like uh, the tone of this particular session has kind of leaned toward yeah, like goofy and whimsical um well we can we could either leave it but... vague, uh still and just say i think what i'm getting at is the townsfolk ended up doing something that they should be ashamed of whether or not right. it was straight up murder or oh god you know what they did oh what they do they killed billy 
Uh, who was like, he didn't burn, he didn't shoot the um, uh, Carter, <laughs> and he didn't burn down anybody's house. Yes. Yeah. He he did he did actually uh, commit some crime at some point, um, but like no, that hasn't even come up, and uh, I don't think anyone knows that. Oh, poor Billy. I, yeah, he probably couldn't keep up with him, right? Like he got he got a um, Maybell like with her gun in one hand, like shooting, and yeah, that's true. They probably wouldn't have come after her. <laughs> Take the yeah, easy yeah, but Billy was a little bit fell a little bit behind. He was a little bit you know the last one to run out or something, and. Oh yeah, so, like the last one of the herd, kind of like the slowest, the slowest yeah. time. Oh, yeah, I think it's what so happened. The two like actually guilty people got away. Yeah, so I think that sounds about right. <laughs> That's pretty perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay, so That's then I can awesome. for Alex and Mike. Uh, how do the townsfolk deal with what they have done after after the events of that night that they have gathered together in mob violence? You want to speak to your faction, Alex, or your section of the faction? Oh, yeah, I guess yeah. that's true. The old timers and the new timers. <laughs> uh, I think the old timers are pretty happy with it. I mean, we got to meet out the justice as the town, those Easterners, didn't come interfere with our business. I think they're like, and we didn't get incorporated. So, really. It's like the true values of the West came through and we killed an innocent person. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, Bethany asked in the chat, did they convince themselves that Billy was the actually guilty party? Oh, definitely. 100%. We wouldn't it have was all him. Billy's fault. The arsons, the murders, is, we killed him. So it has to be true. The loitering, the jaywalking, it was him. But I think... I would add on that though that Carolina and Morgan, I I think know the truth. Like, because Morgan's incentive was to get the deputy killed, and then Carolina, I think, like, yeah, like especially after the conversation that she and Lee had, I think it was a little bit more like focused on like who the likely culprit was, and probably puts it together that it wasn't them. So then I think. Yeah, because then that's kind of fun that the people who are like inciting the mob, um, yeah, do know and just kind of like, like Carolina doesn't feel, doesn't feel better because of the, the murder. And she just assumes that that's, maybe that's how she works it psychologically. She's just like, uh, the reason that I don't feel better is it wasn't the right people or it wasn't the right mm -hmm. person. Um, yeah. I think a lot of the new timers probably moved to the other side of the, the Seiko and uh, yeah. And Lee is stuck like business still does all right. But uh, yeah, I don't know if his, uh, his dream uh, is happening here. Do you think it's delayed or gone? Um, probably delayed. I feel like the frontier is fickle. Um, there might be a, a similar uh, occurrence on the other side of the creek. And so these these new timers or the, yeah, people who are coming out, there will always be more immigrants on their way to the West. So maybe he uh, tidies up his signs and that kind of thing, or like, yeah, puts new posters around poster, but yeah, he's walking with a slower step, I think. And yeah, the, the people who were here and bought into the vision, I think are gone. Thomas, I feel like things haven't changed much for you. Like, no your way still works. It was just a pretty eventful evening, really. <laughs> just a good old hoot nanny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd be around here long enough, you'll see it happen all the time. Yeah, you just go back to your ranch. And yeah, yeah. maybe uh, take over the land that Carter was looking at. I mean, you don't want to lay fallow. That would be a shame. Yeah. I mean, if there's more rustled cow to buy every now and then, it's, I don't have any problems with that. <laughs> yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> if the kale's <laughs> rustled. Uh, and our two lawmen, 
what becomes of you? I feel like the Owens had a setback. You guys had life changing <laughs> events happen. Oh, God. Um, are we just run out of town? I think, yeah. Wait, well, I was thinking for um, for Gerald Sheriff when you <laughs> perhaps he finds a new a new life with his other his other lover, uh, you know, Duke Cahill. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's like what happens. <laughs> There's room yeah. for you there, Alonzo, out there on the Cahill Ranch. <laughs> Oh man, and I, you know, the, the outlaws are my highest faction now. Um, or no, they have been all along. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, they just keep getting action. higher, though. Um, actually, you should be at four with the outlaws now. When you gave yeah. them the keys, you probably should be at five or six, something like that. <laughs> De facto leader, yes, <laughs> Um, hmm, I'm trying to think if I, if I do that, or if I like. I, I think he tries to tries to like actually do the sheriff's job for a little while, and then just it's not working. Nobody, yeah, uh, that that townsfolk score should be really going down, as should the merchants and everybody but outlaws. Um, whether or not they realize what he did, they're certainly going to hold him responsible. Like mm -hmm. whether it's you let them go or you fucked up and got drunk and let them take your keys. Um, either way doesn't inspire a whole lot of respect. So uh, I think he leaves. I think he goes to a, another town and I don't know, takes up buggy repair or some shit. But I, I think law is, is not, is not his uh, strong suit and he knows it. All right. Well, thank you guys. That was a blast. I had a lot of fun. Yes. Um, time flew by and I did not get to give you as much of a break as I wanted. Uh, so if you have any particular feedback, hit it up on the discord or whatever like that. That'd be great. I'd love to hear it. Uh, but I do want to honor as much of the break between the next game as I can. So thank you so much for playing. I really enjoyed that. I just want to say quickly, thank I love I love all of you. Thank you for putting up with my share. Um, <laughs> I, Thank yeah. you for being the best terrible sheriff ever. <laughs> <laughs> Says the deputy who gave the keys and the gun to the outlaw. You clean up your ex, Sheriff. It's my, I, I played the type. I was yeah. like, I, like, try and make out with everyone when we're possible, absolve all responsibility, and they just watch everything blow up. So it was. <laughs> it was uh -huh. yeah. final like, conclusion with the outlaws was justice is blind because they definitely didn't get the right person. <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 Oh, what a good through. Oh my gosh. No, this was like the highlight of my con so far. So like I, I love all you guys. This is amazing. And you're all fantastic players. And you thank you for running this. I'm writing this game. I it's it's my jam, I believe it's <laughs> it. Yeah, I was gonna say your play style uh, dovetails with the game very well. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> I very much hope that I get the chance to play with all of you again. Uh, it was a great group to have. Yeah, I'm very lucky. So yeah, thanks everyone. That was awesome. Right, guys. Enjoy all the rest the of your con, guys. All the love. You too. <laughs> Take care. Bye. <laughs>